You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. We are back, Leatherhead Nation. We are 1084 at the Firehouse Kitchen Table because this is the only podcast in the world. I don't care what Ruffy says that brings the Firehouse Kitchen Table <laughs> to you. We're back. We're back. We're back. We got a great show tonight. Welcome, as always, my lifelong friend, my buddy, my paisan, my Tweedle to my Tweedle D to the Tweedle Dumb Louie Ruffy Refrano. What's up, pal? How are you? Goes. What's up, Petey? Shalom. Hey, hey Louie. Petey sitting at home in his in laws' house over there. They're still away, so the mice will play over there. He's got skateboards. <laughs> He's got a whole bunch of lights over there. It's looking great. I'm running out of along. Jewish jokes. You see this, though? I got yeah. the George Washington behind me crossing the Delaware. That's what's important. Oh, oh mm. look at you. Your father law probably hates that, man. He's anti American guy. And, 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 and then the, uh, the dead Osama. <laughs> we got to have the dead Osama on the uh, Oh, I see that too. It's decent. All right. It's decent. I see it. Beautiful. Yeah. What's Osama. upstairs, though? What do they have upstairs? Like, uh, they have, like Nancy Pelosi on the wall or something up there? What are they? <laughs> What do they yeah, got? They have, they have our teeth, her first set of teeth in a <laughs> they jar. Do. Oh, yeah, they do. It's a, it's They're a wood. beautiful thing. Yeah, wood. yeah, wooden. Yep. Yeah. She's, she's been in Congress for 187 years. So, you know. All right. Moving on. Yeah. Right. Yep. All right. Got a great show tonight. Right, Pete? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm excited. We, yeah, man. What is this? What is this? thing brought to you by what pays the bills here what do we got How does oh it you guys know it i know it we all know it by now but if you don't it's brought to you by getting salty apparel ladies and gentlemen you go to getting salty apparel <laughs> and you find yourself one of these lovely containers for your beverages a beautiful t-shirt or a hat of course and a lucky strike <laughs> now i mean uh you got <laughs> you guys if you want to support us you great. know the deal get on over to getting salty apparel.com where you find the coolest the best firefighter <laughs> apparel and accessories in the game that's right um getting salty apparel.com if you guys want to support the show thank you beautiful so i guess tonight we were actually me and ruffy were friends with her before we even knew we were on the job she was on the job we used to see her in this little shithole rat hole gym that we trained out in ridgewood called olympia gym and there she was throwing around some heavy weight probably put the uh, most of you guys to shame <laughs> so uh she was one of the first female firefighters on the fdny we love her, the one and only, the girl, the woman, Lois Mungay. There she goes. Beautiful. 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 She still looks the same. I, I told her that in, in the pre-show that we have haven't seen her in maybe 15, how, how long are we out of it? 10, 15 years? Uh, what, out of the firehouse? No, out of the gym. Out of the gym? Yeah. When did it close? Eight, nine years ago, ten years ago. Yeah, but I was gone before that. I was living in Long Beach. So oh, you moved out to the island, right? Yeah, so it's got to be fifteen years. She looks yeah, the same. Yep. Oh yeah, Jerry. Well, it's nice Al. seeing you again. Lovely seeing you. So this is going to be a great show. Uh, we're going to dive right into it. You are from our original neighborhood, right? You grew up in that neighborhood. In, yep, uh, born in and Queen? raised Middle Village. Yep. Middle Village. What high school did you go to? Cleveland. I knew it. <laughs> uh oh. You went to Grover Cleveland? Well, you went That's to why she's by... tough. <laughs> Public That's school all the right. way. Public was school she, all the uh, way. Were you there with my brothers? Any of my brothers and my sisters? I was the class of 76. 76. That was my brother Steve's, I think. Chief yeah, Steve. Maybe. Have to look at the yearbook. He's look 10 years older than me. I was the class of 86. He was the class of 76. Grover Cleveland. That's, we're in the same class. He's the oh. only guy with black socks on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's quick tonight. Look at him. Hey, look, oh, look oh, out. Oh, look yeah. out. Rock <laughs> up. So what So what were you doing before? We'll get into the whole thing about how you took the test and uh, what were you doing before that when you got out of high school? You working? Got out of high school, school, went to Brooklyn College. Okay. Graduated Brooklyn College, got a job with uh, special ed with the uh, United Suburb Wolsey for 2 years. Mhm. Mm uh, started my master's and then took the test for the fire department while wow. I was at Brooklyn. You're one of those educated firefighters. Oh, Look at that. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. You got, us? you got us? You got us? Hold on. You hear us? Now I do. Go ahead. All right. All right. We are, we're hearing some. We're hearing some. It sounds like Fox News or something in the background. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is that? Can they? Can whoever that that is who's that listening to that? Lower that a touch. I can, but I'd have to leave to do it. I'll be back. Go ahead, girl. Okay. <laughs> I 
I love it. Just gonna get right to at least they're watching. How many times do I gotta tell you to stop? Lower that TV. At least they're watching. Oh, there it is. Okay, really? Oh, she got an American flag behind her. Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's made out of uh hose. Hose? Fire hose, yeah. No it way. does look like it's made oh, out of That's hose. very cool. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. My All right. Like, about their gift. So it's you 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 go to school. What in the world makes you decide that you want to be a firefighter, especially in those days when there was not one single woman firefighter on the job? That is correct. Um, Walk us through that. Walk us through that that thinking, that time. I was at Brooklyn College. I was an education major. I wanted Uh to be a teacher, and they were laying teachers off in 1976, 77. Right. So I just took every possible exam there was, from the state troopers to, to Newark Police Department, Nassau, Suffolk, post office, corrections. Court officers, fire department, a police department. Uh, so I just took every single test that was out there. Uh-huh. And I, when I was teaching, the fire department called, said that the uh, it was under litigation, the test. Would I right. be interested in being part of it? I said, yeah, got nothing to lose. Uh, and that's so what happened. It was under litigation already when they when they reached they out? Were, they were bringing it under litigation f- for the physical. The physical right. Exam. Uh, that member that was, I don't know which one you took, that was called the fire, the, the, the Superman physical in 77. That was a very hard physical. Extremely well, hard physical. Yeah, it was extreme. They changed it to an extremely hard physical. So I'm sure that helped the case a little bit because if they would have kept it the same, right. women couldn't take the written until that year. So we, we could never have gotten to the physical without taking the written. That was the first time women could take the written. That's test. the first time that the women were able to take right. the written test? And then, and then they came out with the Superman physical. So I don't know if there was a ah oh, a little rod to their reason right there. Right, right. Right. We're, we're well, gonna let them. We're gonna well. let them hmm. take that written, but we're gonna make the physical superhuman. <laughs> yeah. So so it sounds like to me that you were just like, hey, I need a job. I don't I care. Need- what, what do I gotta do? <laughs> what do I gotta do? I gotta. I gotta blow, gotta pay the bills. <laughs> I gotta blow out this fire over here. Got it. You no, gotta I run. I gotta run. Always running, running from the exactly. like. You know, you're gonna shoot a guy wearing a you know a, a mask with two bags of money running mm-hmm. out of a bank or whatever you had to do. You had to do. I'll tell you something. When I was when I was 14, 15 years old, I had these two guys I used to play roller hockey with down at the park. And they, uh, their uncle was in 105. He was a senior man over 105, uh, Eddie Cooper. And uh, these kids were buffs. And in the late 60s and the 70s, all you saw were plumes of smoke coming out of Bushwick. Yeah. And these guys would have turnout coats in their trunk, and they'd take their skates off, and we'd jump into a car, and, and he would go down with their cameras. And they actually got some pictures like put into the papers, and they pay for that stuff. So they were doing it for money, and they were doing it because they were buffy. And right. I would just jump in the car and watch... 112, 124, all of those guys down that way, 222. And, and I would just go on buff fires. And I was like, I didn't even think of becoming a firefighter because I never seen a female firefighter. Right. And I was just like, ah, this is crazy. This is nuts, you know? And uh, so I got a little bit of experience and a little bit of a taste of, of like the adrenaline thing that you right. would get from yeah, doing yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. So it came natural to me. It just, I wasn't afraid to become a firefighter. I said, that'd be great. I'll give it a shot, you know? But again, I like I took the PD test and everything else. It's, it was right. You know, it's so was, funny too that that much work was so close to our neighborhood growing up, but it never crossed up into that neighborhood. Crazy. It yeah, never came over Motel Avenue. No, I, I mean, you talk about the war years with the 124, cemetery. and it just never came that far. It was it almost re- like it, it really was the cemetery there, Cypress <laughs> yeah. Hills. All those yeah. cemeteries there blocked. But you know, even Glendale up, and Ridgewood, he about coming up towards 140, like 124. Yeah. How close I could run to 124 for 140. Seneca oh, Avenue. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, uh, Gabrielle, a Gabrielle that's is saying move. Gabrielle wanted to say hello to you. He's in the chat right now. <laughs> there he is. Oh, whatever, shit. whatever, whatever, oh, okay, whatever, okay, whatever. Okay, whatever. Okay, 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 okay. He's in the chat. We got it. <laughs> okay, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Love oh my goodness gracious! All right, so you're buffing it out. So you get a little introduction to the fire <laughs> service, right? You had no family though in, in the fire None, service. None, nobody in civil service whatsoever. All right, so they call you. They say it's under litigation, right? It yeah. was. It was. I mean, I ask my brother all the time. He says it all the time. But that test that they gave back then, half the guys couldn't pass it to the in, in today's. They just couldn't. The Superman, the Superman physical. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, I although Hank, uh, Hank, you I, did take I, it. I took it. I took it in, uh, I think it was 78. I remember I couldn't walk for about two weeks. Yeah. Um, I was in college at the time, and I was in pretty good shape at the time. And uh, it was at the armory down by 214 and 111, mm-hmm. the uh, Lewis Avenue Armory. 
And it was it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, you have to hold a position on it on a chin bar for two, two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. 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 And I was watching other guys in my group, and they would drop and drop and drop and drop. And then I stayed there for like a minute. Then I started dropping. Oh, no, no, no. You know. They had to go so how was it? Even, so how was it when you went, even went to take the test? There had to be a whole bunch of shit, you know, like going on. Like guys, even even women just taking the test, they were probably pissed off, or they gave you a lot of attitude. Or, just going to take the test. Did you get a lot of shit when you went yeah. to take no, the test? No, I was no, I, no, not really, because basically no? it was the, it was the uh, the proctors, the people that were you know doing the different stations, and yeah. other people, other people trying to get a hundred. You know, it was, they weren't, they didn't give a shit about me. They they weren't on the job yet either. Everybody was trying to just get on the job. Did they have? A, did they have a? Did they have a word of the day back then, or uh, was it just <laughs> no word of the day? Like, <laughs> do, do you have one now? <laughs> He's on his game now, boy. Pete, what's the word of the day, buddy? Uh, ladies and gents, sorry for the late one, but the word of the day tonight is Duke. Nah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't know. Maybe you want to ring the horn when we do the red word of the day. You know I'm what just I just to... did, but I'm having a little <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulty. <laughs> That's why you never throw darts. <laughs> That's why you never throw darts. That's the. This is the uh, shot one. And oh, this that's is the, the shot. Whoa! 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 Little sambuk. A little sambuk. A sambuk. <laughs> sambuk going on there. Uh, All right. Hey, so... go! Lois, so, you know what I want to ask you? How many? Yeah. How many women took the physical? That didn't pass. Uh, none of was the women it? passed. No, no, I know. Superman what, physical. What was it? Fifty? How many? How many, how many women? It? How many, women how many women took it? Do you think? Give or take. It wasn't uh, hundred. I, right? I, I should know the answer to that. I have. I really don't have any idea. I know what the, there was at least thirty-six or forty women that were in the academy. Uh, but so I, there are probably more than that. But no one, you know, I'm sure a lot of women didn't decide to go through with it. They just took it and other things. I think happened. I remember. I do remember reading that. That, or, the, or they had relatives that said this might not be a good idea. Right, 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 right. I, yeah. I think I think more than half didn't yeah, go I'm back sure to the probably school. Yeah, I'm sure that physical at the armory in '77 with the guys, the, the Superman right. physical, but bump Superman physical. But uh, uh, a lot of them ne never followed through on it. See, you know, we keep saying Superman physical. We're gonna, we're gonna. That's what they called it. I know, but we're gonna stroke Hank Molay. He was our senior guy. He would, came in off that list, so he he okay. he must have done all right with it. So now he's, his head's probably this big, like, oh, Superman physical. Look at me, I'm a Superman physical. Good old Frank Molay. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think the first one actually that that physical actually I think was the first competitive where they ranked people. I think the one before that was qualifying. The one I had in the earlier seventies was a qualifying mm -hmm. uh, a physical, and we passed or failed it. So a lot right. of things changed, you know, right. between when women when women finally started. Taking so, it. so you actually thought you were when you didn't do it, you, you didn't complete it. You thought you were out. That Is was that it. What? Yeah, yeah. So then you got yeah. a phone call that said, "Hey, listen, you know, uh, this under litigation. Are you still interested? You want to take part in this class action lawsuit?" And I was just like, "I don't care. Yeah, sure. Boom, done, yeah." You can always turn things down, but you'll never get another opportunity. So that's right. how I looked at it. Huh. All right. So how long before – well, you took the test in what, 77? 77, 78. I think and that, you, that, that, you, that. And you got on in 82, right? Right. So right. what was that like? You go to Proby School. Were all the women in that one class? Yeah, everybody was in Proby School at the same time. So how many people were in the class? 36, 40, something like that. Total, like with the guys, like with the was, guys, you know, it was like 150 guys, right? Oh, see, Ray, Ray Seely in the chat saying, I think the city designed that physical to purposely eliminate the women, is what he was saying. So that's what that's what the uh, that's what it, you would say, more or less, right? It, it well, it's it kind of like uh, it to me, it made kind of like all these things are happening at once. Why, right, right, you know? right, 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 right. With, you, you change the physical that, once we take the written, you know, honestly, all that does is piss people off, right? Because what happens is you. Nobody passes it. Then you sue, right? Yeah. They, they have a litigation. Then you get on. And what's what could be worse than that? I, I mean, I feel like it because then people think you 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 move the goalpost, right? Oh, you, exactly. You, so yeah. and then it's it's just tougher on you as opposed to if they would have kept it, probably you know something similar. You probably would have been you know you especially you know, but probably a lot of the other women probably would have because we say it all the time, Lois. We I don't care. Coops don't care. We never cared. What color you are, you know, what you are, 
as long as you were you were there. Black, right? I mean, white, uh, red, matter. yellow. I don't it really didn't matter. Yellow. As long as you're going down the hallway and that person's there with you, that's really what matters. You know? yeah, so, if you're I mean, in a foxhole. Uh, I don't care if it's it Lois does. coming for me if the house is burning or if it's, <laughs> if it's any of you guys, as long as someone's coming for me. Yeah. And, and thank you for doing it. You know, yeah. I, I brought this point up to Rufy, uh, to Louie today, Lois. Like, you know, a lot of people had a beef. With uh, uh, women did pass physical and pass physical, but when I got on the job, they were given five points to anybody who lived in the city. So when you really look at it, I mean, I took advantage of something like that. Who wouldn't? If you're going to get on the job, if yeah. you want to get on the job, if they say, "Hey, you give five points," you, okay. How many guys took a bullshit address in the city to to get those five points? I mean, so <laughs> I probably it, name a few dozen off my. But I, you know <laughs> We have, a, I think we have a allegedly. female. Allegedly. allegedly, I think we have a female allegedly. here in the. Allegedly. Uh, they allegedly. We have right. Sasha A in the chat and said, uh, "I took my city's test four times until I finally just started working out like crazy and passed with flying colors. Just started my academy this week, so dreams do come true." Oh, wow, good and luck I, to you. I think and Sasha is typically is a York female name. From? I don't know, yeah. Sasha. Don't know. Where are you from? Tell us where you're from. Yeah, but so, uh, getting yeah. back to that, that's what well, I think. Good luck, main... Sasha. Yeah, yeah, no Stay doubt. Safe. I think that's always been the main issue that I've seen is when it just wasn't the same, right? It, it If you get on the job, you get on the job, and that's it, you know? And it's not about all the other crap, And if, as long as you could do the job. And, that, and like we said, I'm sure out of those bunch of women that got on the job, it's the same thing, right? Some of them could do the job. 10% of them are incredible, you know? Middle, middle, you know, most of them are middle of the road, and some of them are going to suck, just like every, you know, every everybody else, every yeah. every other group. You know what I mean? Guys, forget that part. There, yeah. there were guys, there were guys at the uh, at the top of lists that were not the greatest firefighters. There were guys at the bottom of lists that were great firefighters, but most of the people are always middle of the road. Yeah, that's it. That's you know? the truth. They're, they're going to be yeah. middle of the road, and uh, I couldn't be more middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you look oh. in the front of the captain, the captain in the middle of the road boat, look at that's you, look you? In the front of the boat. If the guy waving back, that's me. You mean, I'm the oh. big waver. Not, 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 not with curtains like those, no. my friend. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no, no. Like you're sitting in the Oval Office. You're the president. Yeah. You're at the top Dude, there, fellow. So that, that video that, that that they had of me in Proby School in 93 that they posted up on, uh, yeah. on the thing, the guys made it seem like I was um, – Forrest Gump when he was on the boat and he was waving to Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> oh my God, I was crying today. I was crying. I like the like other these... thing that they posted. The thing hanging from your rearview mirror. The yeah. little dog. <laughs> <laughs> they got too much time. Too Go to a fire or something. For God's sake. Yeah. Well, you right. know what? Look at this salty gal right here. Oh, 235 engine. But we didn't get there yet. We're still in pro. Oh, my good. All right, we'll get there. But look, I just. That's I pretty early. That's pretty early in her career. She looks like a baby there. I thought look so. The that's why the I'm big, I think is the old Mac. Right. Hey, P, pull up what Frank Supton just said. Uh, he had a chief that used to say, I don't give a shit if you were beamed in from Mars, oh, nope. as long as you can do the job. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Real talk USA. And then, listen, that's the bottom line. And, and you know, I don't want to beat this this up too much, but we did want to touch on it. But right. the bottom line is, it's, it was going to be tough, right? No matter, you know, you, you had to work, do, do what, double what a what a guy probably had to do just because everybody was under the microscope, right? Exactly, yeah. more than average, more than it, just it, a regular it, probing. And that's you know, the truth. And I, I learned as I went along too. Like I said, I didn't have friends or family on the job, right. so I was like, I didn't know what to expect. But uh, One, it, uh, it was horrible, horrible. They, they had good bosses, which was a good thing. Oh, yeah, I went to a say, great shop. I How mean, was yeah. it in probably school though? How did they uh did they did they ride school. you hard or did they yeah, uh yeah um there was a few things that they made us do in probably school that when uh when the guy in the class before me, one of my favorite people in 235, Brian Muldoon, he was in the class before me. <clears throat> he goes, Oh, we didn't have to do that. Oh, we didn't have to do that. <laughs> that was when they, that was that was when I used to have the smokehouse wasn't controlled and fed with gas right right had, right it wasn't gas right they had they had pallets and diesel fuel no they had the the, the, the railroad ties in there and they're throwing yeah. oil on there and i got bad bales of hay and they, whatever they could find they throw in there and they said if you if you really panic and you can't breathe and you think you're gonna have a problem yell vent right and i was in the group a fire group of six th two women and four guys and one of the guys yelled vent <laughs> I'm sucking water. I'm sucking water off the floor. 
right? There's little puddles of water from where they use the handle. And I'm sucking water off the floor. And this guy yells vet and I says, this is, this is, this is not a good thing. This is, <laughs> this is not going to work. So they made us go out. We took a blow. And then they made us do 15 laps around the smokehouse. And then really? go back in again. Yeah, it took 15 laps to get him all charged up again. Now we had to go back in, and I told this guy, you fucking yell this shit again. I said, I'm <laughs> <laughs> You suck it up, man. You suck oh, it you up. Gotta, don't hold your breath. Do it. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, right. Come suck on, that man. shit, man. Oh, man. Uh, Killing oh, me here. Shit. I'm dying here. Was, oh, my goodness. So, uh, so Brian goes, no, we, we never had to run around the smokehouse. We didn't have to do this. We didn't have to do that. But I don't know. Maybe they were trying to see who they can weed out early on before it got to graduate. They, uh, I mean, they weed out guys anyway. You have 10, they 50 do. guys. Absolutely. Out. Absolutely. Did I'm they, not did, just did saying it was a woman thing. I'm just saying that things were different between the yeah, yeah. before. Did and, any and, of the women, the women drop out? Too. Did any of the women drop out? Uh, I think two women dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of them ended up getting a 35-foot ladder dropped on her head. And that, that turned Oops. her off completely. And then another one who was really, really good, who did pretty good on the, on, the, on the Superman physical, didn't fail by much. She decided to go into contracting and moved out, out west. We all, we all thought she was going to be like our superstar, you know, and then she, yeah. she kind of quit. Yeah. Well, I, at some point, I don't know so, if she quit. I don't know if she quit as soon as she got out. I, I, th I thought she might have quit in Kobe school. I could be wrong about that, but she, oh. she would have been one that would have been good. Hmm. At some point, though, Lois, you're in there. And they're bu busting your chops and, you know, like, you know, you're feeling the, the weight of the position that you're in, I'm sure. So did you have like a sort of switch turn on in you kind of like, no matter what, fuck that, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass this shit. You know, was it a matter, like no longer a matter of getting a job? Was it more of like a matter of, no, pride? it was a challenge. And I, and I, and I, I, I did the best I could. And even, uh, even, even some of the uh, officers, Turned around and says, "You know, you do, you do, you're doing really good. You're doing really good." And then it got time for uh, graduation, and they go, "Oh, you're not graduating." I said, "What do you mean? I'm we're going to hold you over for two days." I said, "For what?" They go, "Oh, you got two, two, two or three, some kind of demerits." I says, "When and where and 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 which which things?" I think what they tried to do, and I'm not really sure if this is true because it's this is just my own opinion. Uh, they didn't want the graduation class to be too big, they, you know. And, and and two days after, they held me over two days, and then I got shipped. Uh, in the morning, I was going to 58 engine, and they had lunch. And in the afternoon, I went to 235. So wow, did all the girl? Uh, did they go to busy places, or they just got scouted? Them. They did, right? Most of them. Yeah, that was no, another say, another way of, of uh, trying to weed them out. Probably they go well, to a couple of jobs, is, and they're like, "Fuck that." Kobe, there's a lot of there was a lot of pressure, I'm sure, on the instructors. Yeah. To fail us. You know, don't you don't pass these guys. You know, I'm sure it was a lot of pressure, and it was a lot of pressure on the officers of the houses you went to. Oh sure. my God, of course. So you know, if you're going to go, not everybody is going to go to a busy house. If you if you're going to a relatively slow house, you know how it is. You could wait a year for a fire on a nozzle. How what are they going to grade you on? Showing up right. on time, making breakfast, right. cleaning, making coffee, changing beds. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, not everybody's going to go to a busy house, but they sent most of them. I mean, two eighty nine. 58, 235, 234, you know, um, a lot of busy houses. I, I, I don't know there were too many houses in the Bronx that well, but I right. know a lot of the girls went to the Bronx. Right. And uh, uh, lower Manhattan, uh, busy houses, you know, a lot of them. So, you know, not, not everybody had to wait that long to get a job. All right. So you walk, you get your assignment you go to 235 you go there right after probie school knock on the door and i was just this is what i've been waiting for first, the whole day i'm nervous just house. to hear I what walk, you're going to say there's a lot of noise in the firehouse i walk in the kitchen you could hear a dime drop <laughs> <laughs> i put i put a cake on the table i asked for the officer and they were just like and, and i'm not a big person you know so it's like you know, if i if i was you know 5 10 and 175 pounds and yeah, it would be a, probably a little bit different. So they were just like rolling eyes, and I just went up to the office. You're in this group. You got to come in to, uh, tomorrow morning for your first tour, and uh, I'll, I'll see you in the morning. I'm working the night, and yeah, and that was it. And I came in the next morning, so the night guys were sticking around, and day guys were there, and and uh, <laughs> and that was it. You know, they were like, "All right, this is what you got to do." You know, and a couple of the guys showed me around. Not it's, most of the guys are. I, they were like three or four probies when I got there. So those were the guys that were the most helpful. Right. Really. And the senior guys. The guys in the middle didn't know what to think. So uh, it, it worked out pretty good. Just tell me what I got to do and I'm going to do it. That's it. 
Yeah. So how long were you there before you go to your first job? I was the black. I was the white cloud. Two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks. Oh, you had to wait that long, huh? <laughs> and we had we, it was a night tour, and I had a covering officer. And uh, you know, the, the, the truck out the door, and they just held it until we got water. You know, and mm-hmm. you see the fire, the glow coming to the fire at the top of the truck. And I'm like, you know, hey, you, you just want to don't want to scare anything. You don't want to drop. You don't want to lose a glove. You, you know. And by the time I got water, and 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 another, I was I was back up. By the time I got water and that door opened, I never pulled the, the the straps tight on the face mask. I was like, I had it on and I was going for my gloves and he's going in. So the mask was kind of like over here and I took a <laughs> feed and a half. It was after dinner. I puked my brains out uh, and we had spaghetti. So the gulp was put a flow of blood. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Let me I'm wipe back. the spaghetti off my face. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I'm good. I'm so good. how long do you, how do you get the, the, your first job on the pipe? <sighs> probably. You know, they, they didn't give me the pipe right away for a long time. For, for probably months. They had me as, they had me a backup. Uh-huh. And the first one I actually remembered is how I got the name Duke. <laughs> oh! Oh! It's- yeah. Oh, there you go. Now I know you heard something about the 111 thing because he's the Duke, you know. But um, it's a three o'clock in the afternoon. It's quarter to three in the afternoon. Um, it's a beautiful day, hmm. and you get an EOS no contact. So what's the first thing you think at that cool. time of day? School. EOS, school. no contact. School. Who's in the school. streets? The kids are getting Kid, out yeah. of school. Yeah. You get a box. You get a pull box. And EOS, no contact every day at that time. Well, this was, uh, I was still a probie, thank God. So <clears throat> I had my mask on. And everybody else was lax. Days, nothing showing from the street. The officer goes in. Stretch a line. So we figured it might be rubbish in the hallway, something like that. There was nothing, no, nothing showing from the front at all. And we went into the... Uh, we went into the hallway, and uh, I actually didn't have the pipe. I ended up with the pipe, um, nice, because the guy didn't, the nozzle man didn't bring a, but didn't bring a mask. And oh, I, as soon as they popped that door, it, and we had a hydrant right in front, everything was bang, bang, bang. So it was down to the ground, a blast of heat, thick smoke. You couldn't see anything, and I'm like, oh shit! So which he goes, oh, take the nozzle. I'm gonna get my mask. I'll come right back. So. I took the nozzle and I says, right, I'm going to start going in with the officer. The officer didn't have a mask either, but he took a beating and a half. And all of a sudden, the face piece, when we went in, I made the mistake. I only gave it like a half a turn, just enough to get in. I didn't open it up. And the thing collapsed on my face halfway down the hallway. Now 111's coming in. So I was like, the thing's collapsed on my face. I had to take the mask off. I'm dying, right? I'm holding the, I'm holding the line and I, and, and I, you ever hit your head on a pipe in the middle of the night and you hear that thud? Well, that's what happened to me. Oof. Something hit me in the head, snapped my head back. I'm in the hallway. I'm hanging onto the line. I shut the line down. And then the, 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 the original nozzle guy came in and grabbed the line. And, then he, and I said, and he goes, you were right. And I was like, I says, I don't know. Right. So I, uh, I get my stuff together. It was still going in the back. They had to make a right. There was still another room in the back. They didn't take the windows because there were people on the rear fire escape. And he would have roasted them. So it wasn't vented. And when I, when I got out to the front door, it was knocked down quick after that. But when I got to the front door, I, I, you know, it was daylight and it was bright. It was middle of the afternoon. And I'm going like this. And I'm spitting out clumps of blood. I didn't realize that. I, I split my head and the blood's dripping down my, my, into my mouth. I, you know, and I ended up with a big black eye. I had to go to the hospital. They, they ended up butterflying everything together. I didn't need stitches. And uh, but you know, I look like Rock. I had a black eye, it was swollen, I had a cut over my face, and so they, that's how I got the name Duke <laughs> because I look like a, I look like a fighter. Hey. You know, I look like a <laughs> oh, I saw... <laughs> Pete, you're not lifting anything up, Pete. All right, is that, all right. Is that the I'm one watching. Chief Chief Bro wrote something? Uh, Phil uh, Servino, he wrote something that uh. Oh, I love that guy. He's such. Yeah, a- he said that you you he had that must have been the job where you were out of air, yeah. but you wouldn't give up the nozzle. Well, or is that a different? Well, job? that might have been another time. 
<laughs> that might have been another time because I, I got to the back and I was like, I, was, I thought I was going to pass out. I mean, I took a shot to the head. I mean, snapped my head back. Yeah, and, and it turned out that I think what happened was the truck, as soon as we got knocked it down a little bit, they're jumping over your shoulder. And I think I, I caught a good shot with the with Halligan. The Scott pack. Oh, it's Scott. Scott oh, pack. shit. I think it was, it, it sounded like my head hitting a pipe. So I, I'm thinking it was a Scott pack. And, uh, and and because it was new and, 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 and they were worrying about the women getting hurt and people sabotaging their shit, up they came, they looked, they looked at my gear, they they took my mask to make sure nobody messed around with it. I mean, it was a big thing. Safety battalion had to come down. Oh no shit. Uh because they thought that, somebody was know, fucking with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you know what we were talking about. No, 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 you no, can't I'm see sure, shit in the I'm dark. Sure I fucked up. <laughs> I, I only gave it a half a tone. I didn't open it up all the way. They teach it out in public school. How many tones? All these tones, ten tones, whatever the hell it is. I just didn't have time. I didn't have time to do it. So, Lois, we were that. saying uh, I had I had read that, you know, not not to go back too far, but when you guys got on the job, you got the back pay, you got some pay, and you got yeah. some, uh, and you got your time, and that's what you know. Guys were pissed off about that, but tell tell. We, we had found out that what, what did you do with the money that they, they paid you? I got the, uh, st- in those days, they weren't little satellite dishes. They were. They yeah, right. It was like- so I got a satellite dish for the roof so the guys could watch. For the firehouse. That, yes. that must, that's a good, uh, that's a home run, man. When I heard that, I'm like, that's just a typical, that's the lowest, man. <laughs> so this is going to be a weird yeah. question, but. I would have liked to bring in a keg of beer, but that was for <laughs> Allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> so I got to ask this one. So you 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 go to quarters for the first time. Now you got to sleep there. What what's oh, that like? God what's that all about? A bunch of fathers and snorers. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. And, and I'm not excluding myself from either one of those. <laughs> 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 but they had to scream that they wanted that the city gave us a scream. It was like a, I guess I remember scream. you seen a hospital, you wheel it in and it's like, to separate me from the guys. And I go, I don't want to scream. Yeah, you know, I put the screen in the corner, it never went up. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I'm I'm 24 years old. I've seen guys in their underwear before. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing me, I'd probably wake up, get caught in the fucking thing, and they'd say I missed the run. You know. <laughs> that would probably happen, right? Some I shit know, like I'd that. Down, up in the yeah. Nice. All right, P. Let's see some of those pictures now, kid. Now we well, could. Uh... I'll tell you, this one, I, this one's badass. There's a few of them that are snotty too. So how much time you have here? A year, two well, years? Probably. Well, I don't have a Proby helmet on, but it's on my old helmet. Oh, that's right. Coat. I'd say two, three years, maybe. I was probably about 27, 26, 27. I mean, this is a good one, but check this one out. Look at that snotty yeah. photo. Yeah. But you know what's good? about After every fly, I'm always smiling, and so is everybody else. Cause yeah, it just out. happy, right? Ecstatic. <clears throat> just love doing it. It worked out, yeah. Nice. I don't know who took that picture, but I ended up with one in fire. They don't... A lot of people buff, you know, they buff, they're either yeah. riding with 111 or they're riding with the, the the battalion or they're riding in an engine somewhere and they, and they just start snapping pictures and then they just send them back to the firehouse. I don't even know who took them. Right. Who, who was, who were your bosses then when you first got there? Who, who did you really uh, gravitate uh, Cap- to? Captain Hogue was this big bear, very quiet. But if he got, when he, when he opened his mouth and he was yelling, you'd run for the hills. He was an old 28 and 11 guy from the sixties and seventies. So uh, those nice. types of guys, like uh, Captain Moore from uh, from uh, uh, 102, uh, Chief Deep at Dover, uh, my old captain, I love them to death, Joe Watts, they were all 28 and 11 guys. None of them listen. They all talk. So they're all talking at the same time, and they don't talk. They scream. So they're all screaming and yelling. When they're all together, they're all yapping and screaming and yelling. And this guy, when he was the quiet one. So those are the ones you got to worry about. One time we screwed up at the rock. Uh we had a senior guy driving, and uh, he he hasn't been in a fire in probably 25 years. And he had to do a mass confidence course, and he put the mask on backwards. He didn't have his boots. you know. So they ended up kind of, make, kind of failing us. He comes in on the night tour, and he finds out we failed. you know. And we all, we all thought we did good. but So he comes in, and he goes, what the fuck? He's screaming. He goes into house watch. We had a big, uh, 
like a cushiony chair for the housewatch. You know, we, we didn't have a bed at housewatch, but we had a comfortable chair. He picks this thing up. I don't even know how he picked it up. And he throws it out the housewatch door and he got his fingers jammed in the door frame. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he screamed even more. Oh, he was probably pissed off so even more. I had more. to watch. So when I heard him coming, I ran to the kitchen because I knew he was going to go nuts because he was screaming all the way to house watch. And when he did that, you heard him scream and yell. And uh, <laughs> the, the chair went back into the house watch and they had a big ashtray. It was made out of like steel. And I and I, then I stopped coming back into house watch and this, this ashtray went flying over my head. If it hit me, I'd be dead. It just went, I thought it was flying over. I was like, oh, shit, I ran back into the kitchen. And nobody, I was the only one that was on the FBI floor. Everybody else was hiding in the kitchen. And, and we're like, oh, he's pissed. We're, we're done now. And he goes, that's it. He gets a, one of these old school chairs. He goes, this is the house watch chair. And it ain't moving from here until I'm gone. How can you sleep on this thing? You know, I, I, I used to sleep on it. <laughs> I mean, other places, beds, you know. And I was like, oh, boy. Lois, so we don't he, sleep. He was, he was my first captain. And he was anything could happen this guy never raised his voice okay it could be rolling over your head you could think he's dying okay we're gonna move in a little bit more okay we're gonna make a right we're moving into this and he was and those are the guys you want yeah no and doubt you want man. the screamers thinking you're gonna die and his floors collapse and something's going on you don't know about but he was he was great uh lieutenant green was the my, <laughs> my lieutenant. he actually was in the uh, reserves with al fives for like 20 years really Best wow. of friends, and I didn't wow. even know for like the first five years. He knew I was on a job. He never asked who I worked with. Al, Al Fives owned, uh, he owned Al the gym Five that we went. Al Fives had hash marks from his wrist to here. He was one of those guys that they they saluted over generals. He was yeah. like the, you know, three up, three down, that's shit in the middle, shit in the side. Some kind of super super sergeant. I don't, I don't yeah. know. What and he uh, he owned the gym that we he owned one of the first bodybuilding gyms in. You know, back in the fifties when that he was trained Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thing. Yeah, he trained Arnold. Yeah, he had pictures yeah. of Arnold all throughout the old school gym. Yeah. This yeah. guy never took drugs, never did anything. Al, uh, Lieutenant Green uh, told me, he goes, I'll tell you an L5 story, if, if I can. Can I? Have yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So L5 is a beast, right? He's like a six-degree black belt from Korea, not from schools here, from over there when he was in the military. He's like a six-degree black belt. So he's, he, he, he's training these kids. He's got, I guess it was like boot camp or something, and he's yelling, and this kid was all jacked up, you know, Lieutenant Green told me, uh, Al Fives went up to this kid, he's all jacked up, and he goes, how many push-ups can you do, son? He goes, I could do 50 push-ups. 50 push-ups, that's amazing. He goes, I'm going to match you. He goes, sir, because Al was probably in his 50s by that day. He's, like, he's pushing 100 now. He's like in his 90s. He's almost, he's almost 100. He's in his late 90s. Yeah. No, oh, my had, God. Uh, so, and and he's still, still bench pressing heavy weight. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, 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 Bo, uh, Bo Green goes to me, he goes, so, so. Al Fives was about five six. Yeah, he was five, short five, guy. Six. Yeah. So he goes, all right, son. I'm going to go. So he goes, you know, I, I, he goes, you sure? The kid's saying this to Al. He goes, yes. So the guy goes down. He starts doing what Al does fifty with one arm. <laughs> 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 he was solid, right? He was solid. He was. Ah, yeah, kid, he was so ah, kid, kid, what are you doing, kid? You're not doing those, those he, drugs, are you? I don't think he ever knew my name. I went to the gym. For, I was upstairs for 10 years. I was downstairs for almost 20 years. I don't think he ever knew my first no, name. I was, was kid. kid. Everybody was kid. kid. Hey, kid. But no, no, like, too, he knew something about everything. He'd be adjusting people like a chiropractor. <laughs> not a workout bench. <laughs> not a workout bench. Yeah. He knew how to do that. I shit. know. He learned it. He learned. Another one of my lieutenants who came back in his battalions, we're still good friends to this day, him and me and his family. Uh, Lieutenant O'Connor, like a like a priest. This guy was totally straight, fair, straight, the best. The guy, kind of guy you want is your boss. Yeah. And uh, who was the other? Oh, Mel Harper was a 120 guy, all black dude. Never brought his mask. Never brought his mask. <laughs> and he could go to a cockloft job. He can go to a sub seller job. He can go to a seller job. Never took his mask. Never raised his voice. But it took a long time to get down the stairs. So we'd be all like. And he'd be like, all right, all right. He Coming went to his flies already. We want to go. To yeah, 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 right. Well, that's what oh, happens, look, I'm too. Pulling the Gabby. I'm pulling the we Gabby. say, yeah, we say that all the time. Yeah. So he was old school. So those are my first four bosses. And they were all different and all great. 
all different. Yeah. Hey, Lois, I still talk to, uh, you know, Al's nephew, Justin, right? He's in yeah, squad. he's in squad 18, yeah. yeah. He just said to me, he says, laugh out loud, laugh out loud. he says, uh, Al still asks for Lois every now and again. Oh, he, he actually <laughs> remembered your name. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's that kid. <laughs> kid. Hey, kid. <laughs> hey, you know how I got these calves, kid? He was a sanitation guy, too. For like 30 he years. Or he was in the Air Force. He was in the Navy. He was in the Army. He was in like. Yeah. Three He's like, uh, kid, uh, in between uh, throwing the pails, I used to do calf raises on the sidewalk off the curb. <laughs> calf when raises when he was throwing curb. pails, it was those steel pails. It's not the plastic <laughs> shit, full, right? Full, full of the old coal, too, that weighed about mm -hmm. 120 pounds. Oh, my pounds. God. Great God, stuff. You had that other guy. Remember that old guy, Joe Albert? He used to bend the spikes. He'd be about 100 years old. I do <laughs> remember that guy. I do remember that <laughs> guy. The front like, desk. He's about strong man. Yeah, he was an old time strongman. He, he and he would get, you know, he'd get a kick if anybody wanted to see. He would bend spikes or or rip a deck of cards oh, in half. Show out a yeah. phone book. Yeah. Who was the well, guy? He could hold himself up. He was a desk. short guy. He had like three teeth in his mouth, but he was like a, a Mister America in his heyday. And he says the worst thing I ever did. Well, and he was still. He was, the worst thing I ever did was to use heavy weights. He goes, you know, now I don't lift anything more than thirty pounds, twenty five pounds. Oh, I think I remember that guy. I remember yeah, that guy. Yeah, he always had a, he was bald, but he had a little ponytail in the back. Yeah, he always dressed like a real uh like Yeah, he was like he was like in his fifties or sixties. And he and in the fifties he was like he was one of those guys like in a comic book you'd see in the front with the you yeah, know, I don't remember yeah. who that could be. I'm trying to I, I have to ask We definitely you. had our fag bags on. My oh. brother, oh, you don't have to say that? I don't think you can say oh. that. I'm sorry. I don't even want to wait. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, man. Come on man. So. Sweet. All right, so let's talk more fire stories here. So hey, Joe, in... we got some fire pictures she sent, uh, yes, some jobs. Yes, yes, I have the jobs. Uh... I always used to carry one of those throwaway plastic uh, cardboard cameras, the green cardboard cameras. I remember yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the best because there was no delay. What you took is what you got. So you know, I'll be taking stuff? pictures on my way in, taking pictures on my way out. Right, here, here's actually – this one we know where this one is. This, is uh, this was a collapse somewhere. That and was a couple was like, blocks from the firehouse. There were people yeah. trapped under there. Oof. What, what caused that just, explosion? Was it a gas explosion or something? No, I think it was just a basic collapse. I don't know if it was really? there was no smoke or nothing. Yeah, there was no no fire. This they is just, this has gotta be my favorite one though, right here. Yeah, that's the yeah, best. That's ripping. Yeah. Where that's was that? Street. Fulton Street. Fulton Street? So you guys are first. Yeah, and it's there. daytime. That's how much smoke there was. That was a daytime fire. Really, and then you said yeah. you said that it was uh, gasoline. That's why it's all over the sidewalk well, there. Well, you could see the you could see on the bottom of the picture behind the trunk of that car there. That's the sidewalk on fire. The, the oh. gasoline, whatever they used to douse that store, it was dripping out. So down, it was down, down. Uh, torched for sure. Then, oh, without a doubt, yeah. <laughs> you don't have a fire like that in the middle of the day on Fulton Street. <laughs> 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 and we're about six blocks away, and you see something like that. Yeah. Did you have the nozzle for that one? Do you remember? No, I had the backup. Brian backup. Muldoon, one of my favorite guys ever, uh, had the nozzle for that. And uh, we, we were rolling around in there. We, we knocked <laughs> it down. There were a couple 1045s. It, it turned out that there was a, uh, a counter with the bulletproof glass. And behind that uh, was, was the drugs and the money. You know? Oh, and shit. I, yeah. And I remember a chief one time said to me, because there'd always be people <clears> looking at <throat> tens of thousands of dollars. And the chief said to me, best word, best advice I ever got. I should have saved it for the tip of the day. If it ain't the Hope Diamond, don't steal it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not going to cover your pension that you're losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to put that on. We're going to put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't the Hope Diamond, don't, don't steal, steal it. it. I freaking love it. That's but that was always, you know, we always used to find money, right? You always used to see money or or stuff. You, you, you say know, to yourself, all the time. who's going to come and claim the drug money? Right. And then somebody turned around and goes, yeah, I used to be a cop. I used to go into these places all the time. All the shit's marked and everything like that. And, you know, so I would never think of take. I, I never thought it. I was just saying, wow, there's a lot of money there. You know, yeah. A lot of money and a lot of drugs. That was, you know, for some unsavory high school kids, not me, of course, but Bushwick was, you know, you'd go into these delis that had a bulletproof glass and one half-eaten Snickers bar and a warm can of Coke on the shelf. And then, you know, like, what's this? <laughs> but uh, in their defense, they had the coldest beers. Oh, okay. There you go. Somebody they told knew. me, you want the coldest beers? Go to a bodega. They got the coldest beers. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Now, when you, when you were two, because when we were in squad, we had Ungaro there. 
And oh, God. he knew God. that we knew each other. So he used to yeah. sing your praises all the time. I love Lois. I love Lois. Lois, great fireman. Lois, great fireman. You didn't, were you in the, still in the battalion when he was the captain over there? Or I, 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 I'm trying to think of, because you know what happened? I used to come downstairs on mutuals to play. Uh, I was upstairs for health reasons, and I came downstairs <laughs> to play, uh, do a mutual, or do a, you know, if there was something that came up, do a Vasta staffing or something like that, and I would do it downstairs. So I'm trying to think. I think he. I think I was already upstairs when. He, what year did he get there? Probably uh, it's got to be O two O three. Yeah, it was after nine eleven. Then I was deaf. Then he was dead. No, I, I came upstairs in uh, 97, 98, something like that. Yeah, because I got because I got. When I got promoted, I got assigned to the five seven, and I remember, you know, I, I remember seeing you there. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. seeing you. But I, there was somebody wrote uh, on one of the uh, the uh, social media things. I don't remember which one it was, but it was a guy who was detailed to two thirty five, and um, for rotation guess, or just for the day? No, no, no. He was just detailed for the day, oh, and okay. he was, you know, I guess it was getting close to the time, you know, whatever it was, four o'clock, you know, on a day tour, let's say, and you were you were already eight at the time, and he was looking to get out of here, out of there. And you were like, you're out of here, man. I got you. And so you rode, you were coming in to work and you took, let him take up and you, and you, you rode in, in two thirty five until the relief came in. And then, uh, so that's always, I mean, things like that. That's a simple thing that, you know, you might not even think about, but that's, that's, uh, Probably that's don't even remember. Thing. Yeah, no. <laughs> he was doing me the favor. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh. Who was the guy? Uh, Hank was telling me who was the guy who was dead set on breaking your balls and breaking you. Who was that guy? I think he was from one eleven. <laughs> let me say uh, there was. Uh, 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 you're probably talking about Richie Bevis or Stinky. One of the uh, no Richie Bevis. Richie is he, Bevis. Is he the guy from? Is, he went to one thirty two. That guy. Oh, one thirty-two, right? That's how yes. Hank knew him from one thirty-two, right? Yeah, oh yeah, he used to bust balls, but he he was he was a sweetheart. He was a nice guy, but he was he was big. He was huge. he was like I mean, if he had the nozzle, I had the backup. I could walk in behind him and not feel an ounce of heat. You know, it was just like he was just so big, <laughs> and and he was he was a ball buster. I, he might have given me the name Duke. I'm not really sure. He might have given hey. me the name. I don't know. <laughs> So, all right, keep going. So I wanted to take a drink. Anyway. Hmm. So, uh, were you telling me that he used to in the bunk room when all the lights are out and everybody would go to bed? He would say, "Lois, this one's for you," and he'd rip a loud fart. <laughs> 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 and I'd say, "Is that the best you got?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> why? Uh, why do? You, why do you think that you you had an easier time? Um, like acclimating to the firehouse than maybe some other people. guys. I was always with guys. I had more guy friends than girlfriends. I was always with the guys. So I, I knew more like, you know how they say Venus, men from Venus and women from Mars or whatever that is? I'm yeah. from Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> I know how both people think. So I, that probably helped me out a lot. Yeah. You know, did you guys, did you keep in... Did you keep in touch with the other the women that that uh, went out into the field? Like, did you guys stay to you know keep in touch and talk and say you know what was going on? You kind of just oh absolutely after, no we're, we're a good group of. Is this my computer? That it's breaking up. Is it me or is it is it, uh, is, just might it be sound good over there? You sound good. good. Yeah, you sound good. Okay, all right. Because I'm getting all kinds of weird sounds and stuff. You um, I can hear five. you. There you go. It's You're good. You All right. Yeah. So you still keep in touch with those with, with any of them today? Or? Oh yeah. No, I'm good friends with Rocky Jones, retired chief, Eileen Greig. Oh right. She was the Dorian first. Jacobs. Yeah. All these girls. You know, Margaret Moffat. I, I see them on a regular basis. We have an old flames day. Uh, at, That's uh, pretty at cool. Carmines, the old flames. Nice. Yeah. Carmines. Now you're cooking. Yeah. So we would get together once a year, but this year we couldn't do it, of course. But. Uh, yeah, we, we keep in contact with each other. Some I keep in contact more than others. You know, right. how you doing? But, uh, you know, we're all going our own little ways. And, and, and with COVID, stopped a lot of things. So but That's kind of with any probie class, though. You kind of try to keep in touch, and then people just go their own ways. Right. How many How many, How many? many of them made it to 20 years? Did most of them or a good majority? I think, most, I think a yeah. majority of them. A couple of them became, uh, <clears throat> ended up becoming supervising fire marshals. They went to the fire marshals. 
A couple of them are uh, officers. <clears throat> and Rocky, of course, was she was, was the, the first time, chief, right? Was a chief, yeah. And then uh, Michelle Fitz became, just became a chief. She's uh, she she was in Washington Heights. I don't know where she's bouncing around as a chief, but we trained her. A lot of the women that I came on the job would help train the new people coming on. Mm -hmm. John Jay College had a thing. Uh, New York Sports Club had a thing. So a lot of them graduate. You know, we trained them. They went to the they passed the physical. They went to the academy, and some of them are bosses now, and it's it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. When did uh, when did Neil get there, Mullane? <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Is there a date on that? Uh, I sent the. Well, he there. came on with me, so he must have got there in '95. Probably '95, '96, maybe. Yeah. He was your probie. He, I was well. I was there when he was there. Did <laughs> you beat his ass. He was a lot of people's probies. <laughs> uh, he was a great kid. What a great. Hey, Neil, if you if you're watching. Uh, great knowing him. And I know his heart was always in Boston, but he was proud to be a New York City firefighter. And I'm glad he got back to Boston. A big chief there now. He's a big chief there. And he yeah. went out the back of the window. I was watching the thing when he, uh, I didn't realize. I remember Billy Carson said, Neil got pretty badly burnt uh, going out a window. I was like, oh, shit. And then, he, then, he, then I heard the story when he was with you guys. Yeah. So I was like, I'm glad that worked out. Thank God. He said, uh, I saw him again. I saw his post in, uh, on Facebook, one of those things. And he was said, you were my, my senior woman. And he said, <laughs> he said, one of the funniest things that you ever said to him was, you, you guys had a job in a funeral home. And you turned to him and said something like, it's bad to die in a funeral home. And then you said, but it's convenient. <laughs> 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 when I saw that, I'm like, I gotta tell her you that. Are you, 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 you could cut out the middleman there, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought oh, you were gonna God. tell the other story that he was telling on the uh, on the show. I, 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 I watched the interview. I was I was like, oh Neil. I was like, of course I had to watch it. <clears throat> it was the knife guy. We hired we we had these old knives in the firehouse. They were great knives. I mean, they were probably there from. Like, what was the house? 1894, 1895? It was built, you know, it was with the horses. I think these knives might have went back to those days. They were old <laughs> knives, you know. Was, and they were, like, classic. They were perfect for our kitchen. But they would get dull, you know. And nobody really knew how to sharpen them and who's throwing them in a the dishwasher and who's, like, dropping them on the floor and who's using it to, you know, cut something or cut a rope or something. So I said, oh, we'll get, we'll get, you know, we should get a guy to come and sharpen him. So somebody got a guy to sharpen him, but the guy would come every week and he would charge the firehouse like 20 bucks a week to sharpen right, the knives. Yeah, I yeah. Says, Look, most of the time we're eating hamburgers, you know, sausage and hot dogs. I says, well, you don't have, I told the guy, don't come every week. It's costing too much money. Don't come every week. Come once a month. All right. And once a month you come, you take the knives or every other week and just take half the knives, you know, we'll mark them or put a piece of stuff. So this fuck, he just kept coming every week and every week and every week. And I got pissed off. And, and, and I would come in and see the knives and I would go, what happened? The knife guy came. I told the guy not to come. So one day I happened to be working when he came in. And he shot and he came in with the knives. And I, I don't know what I did, but I was really pissed off. And he went, I said, don't ever come back here again. I'm holding a knife in my hand. He just shot. Don't ever, don't ever come back to this house again. I said, we'll shop and I own knives. I'll take them somewhere else. Don't ever come back. It's like ripping your family off, you know? And he did it on purpose because he knew he wouldn't hit me every time he came. Right. I wouldn't be there. You know, but uh, yeah, so it, they got a kick out. Oh, you so he never came the back. Knife guy. You fired the knife guy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fired the knife guy. What? Um, <laughs> did you ever drive? Did you go to show for school? You never? No, never went to show for school. Really? How'd you dodge uh, that bullet, man? No, we had chauffeurs. We had yeah, chauffeurs. but your time had, had to come up. To you were there for 20 years. Your time had to come up eventually. What when when I started having certain when I started having certain health issues, uh, one of them had to do with the cold, and they go just go to show and become a chauffeur, stay in the company. I was like the cold. I I'd rather be in the building with smoke and everything else. I, I could you know I'm, I'm much better off than out in the cold. And uh, so I says you know I said so I went upstairs to the battalion. I says at least I'll do my I'll do tours downstairs. I'm still in the firehouse. I can't go to the medical office. Don't put me light duty. You know, so I was one of those people that when I finally did go to the medical office, they got, my folder was like this thick. You know, it was, you could slide it under the door. I go, where were you hiding? <laughs> go, this, this, this is normal. You know, people usually jump at the opportunity to get out, you know, or yeah. three quarters or something like that. I says, I didn't want to go. I'm like, oh, I don't want to get to the office. 
No, it was a great house to even to do what you did. I mean, you spent most of, you know, three quarters of your career in the, in the engine. And then you did a couple of years in the battalion, which was in the same house. You knew all the chiefs. It, it was a the home. Great run. chiefs. My old lieutenant came back, Rod O'Connor, my favorite guy in the world. You know, he, he was up there. Good guy. I mean, we had great chiefs. I mean, come on. We had Dennis Cross, you know, all these guys were good guys. Cross, yes. he passed. He was the one who passed away 9 11, correct? Is that? ADC. Oh, yeah. shit. If he stayed in the battalion, oh, yeah. he would have lived. And I'm not mm. saying anything because every death is a shoulda, woulda, coulda, coulda happened to you know, right. who went left, who went right, who was detailed to, who had that first job that day. You know, it was a million states. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so but, being upstairs was perfect. It was it was perfect. And, I, you know, you, but you, 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 know, you could Gary play a used, game up there. And Gary used to say, too, that you were great a too because uh, people don't realize some people just go there for whatever reason but a good aide is really invaluable to the chief man i mean you know i mean your brother like, says that i mean he yeah that. i mean at the end i went to drive my brother in, in the division and uh i took it serious you know, you it know? ain't easy and it ain't I, I i guess there was a lot of people that went up to drive because they didn't want to go to fights i'm sure that and it then you kind of get lumped in with that. What the fuck are you doing in the battalion? They would say that to me. I said, look, I had to come here or I'll lose my job. Right. So, uh, and it's not easy. It's not easy. And when you're doing those fire reports, this thing goes to court. <laughs> you better remember what you did. And you better make sure that everybody's <clears throat> covered. Right. You know, everybody did what they're supposed to do. You know, I mean, I sent back, what did, he, what, what did the office send in? CD-19s? What did they send in? With the, the, yes, the fire report, yep. Yeah, if they send it to the battalion, the battalion yep. puts on a big thing. I mean, I've sent stuff back saying, you can't say you did this. This is, this is you know, you better fix this up. This is, you know, <laughs> I think you wrote it the wrong way. <laughs> and he did the wrong thing, Pete. That is wrong. And he did the Pete, wrong we, thing. Lois, we actually have a video. Uh, oh, we geez. have that video, Petey? Yeah, we do. And I was going to say, Lois, don't worry about it because I have to send half of these guys' emails back to them and say, I can't answer this question. This, <laughs> it's, it's illegible. Stand by. Here we go. Yeah, this is a very short <laughs> clip of Lois in action here. Stand oh, by. Boy. No, no. It's, oh, it, God. It's, it's, it's legit. put together, Petey? <laughs> no, 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 no. this no. is legit. The smoke and flames to rush uncontrolled towards the top floor. That was it, but there you are. Oh, no action. sound again. Oh. oh, we lost her. Testing one, two, one, two. Hello, 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 hello. Uh oh, she out. Maybe it's gonna come back. She keeps going. Oh. That. You back? Oh boy, no more videos. That's the end. Where's Deb? She passed can out. Hear, can you hear us? No, I can hear her. No more videos. Hold on. I'm unmuting her. Hello? How about now? <laughs> <laughs> no. Can you hear us? Can no. you hear? No? Can't hear you. Okay. Uh-oh. Let's you have her call? come. Yeah, you should give her a call. We should have her leave and come back. All right. She My didn't have the X out. Did she have the X out? Uh, she didn't have to X out the last time, no. Hold on, I'm gonna mute her. There she goes. <laughs> ah, stand by for technical difficulties. Can you uh, go out and come back in like you did before? <laughs> she passed out. <laughs> the host has unmuted my mic. Okay, I'm unmuted now. I'm good. I'm yeah, can you hear us? Can you, can you hear us? Deb. No, she can't. Mm -mm. That's weird. Yeah, no good. Yeah, how did that happen? Just like that. Yeah. I don't know because it's not in, it's not telling me that uh, it's not telling me that she's out at all. You know. You got any uh, suggestions? Pete, what are your suggestions? Yeah, oh, we could talk to her like that. So tell her to leave the uh, tell her to leave the room by leaving studio and coming back in the way they. Can she you leave the studio room. on the bottom where it says leave the studio? And then come back in though. Does right it say leave this, oh, leave? Can I you want me to click that off? And then the red back square? Again. The red X. There you go. And now you gotta walk her through getting back in. <clears throat> She's gotta click the link and go through I'll the just go back into email and click on the link again. My word. My oh, word. Yours. He emailed you today, right? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna mute cube cubes here. So in the meantime, I got a question I want to ask her, and it's cultural stuff, dude. I'm curious, man. When she got on, dude, it was it was not an easy time for women to get on in a in a man's world like that. Nowadays, it's expected, right? Like breaking the glass ceiling and all that stuff. Well, it is, but it's still tough. I would imagine. I mean, again, like like we brought up, if if you get on the job and you take the same test, that's the way I always felt. And that's the way most guys feel. It doesn't matter if you're black, white. It doesn't matter. Again, it don't matter. As long as you take the same test and you basically love the job and do the job, right? Oh, it's... Here she, she's back. Hold on. Yeah, no, I agree. Stand by. Hey, can Lois, you hear me can now? you hear it? Yes. Yeah, she, yeah can you yep. hear us? You got us? Yes. Beautiful. Yep. There you go. Thank you. There we go. No don't worries. make fun of my glasses. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me unmute. I'm going to unmute Kevin there. I, already have, I have my glasses on. <laughs> we did it. We did it. <laughs> There it is. So, so I was actually just uh, asking Lou, and actually, what I wanted to ask you, Lois, was like culturally, <clears throat> culturally. After you're in there for a minute, after you've done the job, now are guys still, you know, busting chops, or is it like, are you feeling the heat coming from people, or after you get in the mix a little bit, you know? Well, what like, time frame are we talking about? The first couple of years, or halfway yeah, through my I career? I mean, overall, throughout your career, because I can't imagine that, like, you know, like what. You know, when you're in a, a guy in a guy's world, right? You know, you're not thinking about like I, I, when I go do like guy stuff, like shooting guns and everything. I'm not thinking about my wife coming along with me, right? right, right you know right. what I mean? Or or another woman in that. <clears throat> but when you see him, sometimes you're like, oh wow, check that out, you know? So it it it's like a. What I was tell you, it, like, didn't, you know? it, it, it probably was much quicker for me than for most women, uh, as far as like feeling comfortable, because there was actual. I mean, after a couple of years. It was actually things like somebody maybe from another firehouse coming in and he'd say something maybe, maybe it was like, you know, anti-women, not anti-women firefighters, but like, you know, talk about getting laid or some stupid shit like that. And then he'd turn around to me and go, excuse me. And the guy would go, that's Lois and smack him. <laughs> 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 that's yeah. story, about. What was the story you were telling us about when you would, you were in some bar some night and this firefighter was trying to tell you how, you know, you were, you were egging him on a little Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Of course, you know, people are in the bar. And uh, it, it was one of my local joints. I, I didn't recognize him as being a local guy, but a lot of cops and firefighters go to the places I hang out in. And he had a, a fire department show on. So I'm sitting next to him. Uh, hey, how you doing? Are you a fireman? So he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had, I forgot what company it was, but it was like a, a mediocre company. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't 290 or, or 235 or, you know, it, you know, it was like a mediocre company. So I go, yeah, he goes, I go, it must be a very, you know, and then he starts talking to me like he thinks he's, you know, this is a new you. He's I'm just, impressing I'm you. just talking because you're sitting next to me. I, I ain't <laughs> so, uh, so, oh, yeah. I go, well, how, how, yeah, you've been a firefighter long? He goes, yeah, I've been on job for five, six years or something like that because I was a cop and then I moved over. I go, oh, I go, this is, it must be a very dangerous job. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got two of my friends who are on the other side, just, just like, pissing in their pants. Beer's coming out their nose. So, and, and I go, I, I go. I mean, you must go to a lot of fires. I mean, that's a busy house, right? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, well, what was your last job? He goes, oh, I had a job last night. I go, well, anything, you know, were you in danger? Go, oh, all, all fires are dangerous. <laughs> I go, yeah, I'm going on for like an hour with this guy. I'm saying, oh, what's the difference between a fire engine and the fire truck? Oh, so goes, my oh, God. Like, really I mean, I'm just going along. on and on. And <laughs> the, my two buddies next to me are dying. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I know I went to the bathroom, and when I came back, the guy gave me his back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I, said, I said that was the best hour I had in this bar in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. amazing. That because see, who that thinks, I like. you know, I had on like a, I, had, I didn't have on any, on any show or not like that. It was just <clears> it, <throat> I, I just love the way you know people just I don't know. You feel like you got, I didn't even wear fire department. I mean, you know, when I went to the gym, I wore fire department. That was later on. I says when I was first got on, I didn't even want to wear fire. I didn't want anybody to talk about it. I didn't want to talk about nothing. Just wanted to go to work, go home, and then Lois is off duty life, and Lois is on yeah, duty yeah, life. Yeah, 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 we're, yeah. we're like here. They didn't intertwine at all, you know. But you saw that you saw the value of uh, working out. So you were really into work. You were into training heavy then. 
well, I, I wasn't I wasn't born, born big, so I, I I didn't want to be not strong enough to do nothing. You know, you right. get a two and a half, and you're going down a two hundred foot commercial building. You, you get tired. You know? Yeah, it, it's, it's tough. You you're wrestling the alligator, and you feel this thing going backwards, and you're like, man, you got your leg involved, you got your arm, you got you crushing this thing against the wall, and you just try to keep going forward. And uh, you know, so I I never wanted to be in a situation where I couldn't do what I had to do. <clears throat> Right. You know. Let, let me ask well, that's you why you did well. That's why you right. did well. I mean, that's yeah. the bottom line. That's why you did well. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of guys who can't do that, <laughs> by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. And, um, did you ever feel like when you went, when you had like Christmas parties or uh, the wives, the wives of the, of the guys, did they ever, you know, look at you or give you. The first uh, couple of years was like, you know, they would be cordial, but they weren't overly friendly. Uh-huh. And I didn't know if it was because, you know, I'm in, in the same bunk room with them or I'm living with them. And I, or, or it like, if it was a female, female thing, or it was, you know, my cousin, my husband can die because you're working here kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. So I didn't want, I didn't know where it was going with that, but that disappeared. Yeah, that disappeared after a few years. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, well, you, uh, you made that happen. Right, you you made that happen. That doesn't just disappear. You made you did what you had to do, and that, that's why it went away. Is because you and took care really of, you, you took care of business. Well, I, hopefully that's what happened. But after a while, when the boys would go out for the boys' night out, I would always go, and they would always and the wives would ask the guys, "Is Lois going?" <laughs> that, <laughs> like, I, like I was there, like super. Uh, Lois is going. It was okay for you to go. So it went from one extreme to the other extreme, you know. Yeah, you know, if you, I know you're not going here if Lois is with you. Or you're not going here if Lois is with you, you know. So it, it turned out all right. It was I mean, did it get to the point where anything could be said or anything could be done and you weren't ever, uh, you know, shocked or offended or any of that stuff? No, and I'm hoping I didn't offend any of them. That could have went both ways. But um, no, it was, everything was fine. You know. Did you ever pull any good pranks out of the guys in the firehouse? Like, were you uh, a no uh, prankster? Or... I wish I was more creative. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, Some guys are creative, huh? <laughs> Some guys are really creative. Incredible. Oh, yeah. Real Incredible. Creative. I, don't know what, I don't know what I did one time. I did some, and I'm trying to think of what I, it couldn't have been that good. I would be standing out in my mind. But I know I, I remember the revenge to it. I, I, you know what? I actually got blamed for something I didn't do. That's what happened. Somebody did something to somebody. And uh, they said Lois did it, figuring, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Got you. It, got, it got played. I said, I think something happened where somebody said Lois did it. Say it. If they said Lois did it, then no one's going to go back at her. And I go into the bathroom one day, and uh, at that we didn't have a women's bathroom yet. It was, I was using them, you know, we had a bathroom, and that was it. You know, I put the lock on the door when I went, and I took the lock off when I came out. But they put cellophane. Under the toilet seat, really tight. <laughs> <laughs> you the toilet seat. And here you are, and, actually going into and, the bathroom right here. And it must, and it must have been, it must have been, uh, it, it, I, I must have been like, it must have come back from BI, and I really had to go because uh, I remember I said, "Well, I ain't stopping now," and my shoes are filling up with piss. Just throw it at him. I was like. And, and, Oh, I remember what happened. It was meant for somebody else. And uh, <laughs> I ended up going to the bathroom. That was the problem. And they were like, oh, my God, Lois, who's in there? Oh, uh, Ray so Sealy really said. I said, said that was great. I said, you know, <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. My shoes weren't wet in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Sealy was saying in 270, Celia, she was there, had one rule, no C word. Well, I love to say the C word. Oh, no really? Word. Yeah, yeah. and cool. I know Eileen Gregan, who was uh, who was in a three five battalion. You probably know. Her. Did you know Eileen Gregan, uh, mm -hmm. Louis? Probably. She, if drove, I see she her drove again. Chief Dillon. I don't know if you were bouncing around the three five at the time. She might have been in in uh, mm. fifty at the time. But anyway, she's like a nun. She's this is the nicest woman in the world. She, tough, big girl, strong, <laughs> great firefighter, and uh, but like you couldn't say the f word. If you said the f word. You had to, yeah, you had to give her a dollar, and she would use it for the Elsassa fund. Or the oh, I like fund. it. 
I would go to a women's book. meeting and I would just hand you a 20. Did you know they were going to be flying? He was a neighborhood guy, Tommy Alsasa. Yes. He was yes. my baseball coach in, yeah. uh, in and she in really Barack. liked that 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 fun because it helped people that weren't getting help from the job. Yeah. Yeah, it was non line of duty kind of stuff or something yes, like yes, that. Yes, yeah. 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 So she she was she she made a lot of money with that. Did you uh did you have anything that was over the line for you or you just didn't give a fuck? Uh as long as you don't mess around with my safety. Don't mess with my equipment, don't put right. me in a bad situation. Don't leave me anywhere. Don't not come if I need your help. That was the only thing I was worried about. But it turned out that that only lasted like the first couple of years after that. I knew for a fact that, you know, that was never going to happen. Here's an actually good question coming in from the chat. He said, uh, Pete, ask Lois what the guy's wives thought of a new female firefighter. Hopefully. Not happy. <laughs> <laughs> not happy. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Well, like I said before, they, if they first of all, they uh, they could be concerned about uh, us not being able to do the job, or they could have been concerned about the fact that they didn't tr- they might think something could happen between them and their husband, you know. Right. That, you don't know what goes on in people's minds, you know. Yep. You know some guys are good looking, and some of the girls are good looking. You know, you don't know. And it's yeah. happened in firehouses where people have gotten into relationships. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they were married people but you know there were situations where people did uh i mean you look at cops dude cops and their partners all the time that's like rampant female and male cops oh well, well at the same when i took the fire department test i think it was the pd test might have been the first or the second one where women could actually ride in patrol cars with men that was you know i was i fell into a, a time period where like a lot of changes were going on and uh so, so I didn't care about that, but I mean, just saying, like it was same thing with PD and FD, you know. Like uh, yeah. I, I don't know what, what, what the, or maybe it was both things. I don't know. Yeah, we had a girl on Facebook who who posted something. My wife was talking back and forth with her, and she says that when she goes to functions, she gets those looks from the wives, like either you're gonna get my husband killed or you're gonna wind up fucking my fire, f- husband in the firehouse, you know? Like she gets that uneasy feeling from the wives, well, you know? If, 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 if she's smoking pot, <laughs> beautiful, of course nobody is gonna feel comfortable with them working. If you could be in an office somewhere in Manhattan. Yeah. You could be you could be a cop. You could be you could be you could be a nurse and your husband's a doctor or you could be a doctor and your husband's a nurse. It doesn't people are gonna think weird things. Yeah. yeah. So the other, and the better looking you are, the more intimidated the wives are. The other, say. the other, um, the other thing in the chat here oh, is. Oh, well, just that, one thing before. Yeah, I'm go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. No, just no worries. One thing. I excuse me. You know, they, they were women on a job. You know, and they were men on a job whose wives are firefighters. You All know? right, man. How do you or, think or, about or maybe that? Men that, that's men that aren't on a job whose wives are firefighters, and there's a lot of married women on this job. Now she's not. She's with twenty five. Some right, reason, right, like, very right. good looking guys who are well yeah. built, you know. It's like, yeah, so you know, <laughs> you don't hear those stories, though, <laughs> right? I didn't even think of that, yeah, absolutely. You'll go, you'll go drinking with those guys again. That's why are you drinking with that guy Tuesday? Why are you, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's like, you know, what, point, you gotta you trust, your, you gotta trust your partner, of, you, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I pulled a Gabby there, yeah. This is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so uh, excuse me, Pete. I know you. Were no, 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 no. It's okay. Uh, that we like was a, to interrupt great, him. Lois, that was please. a great. That was a great point, actually. Um, and this may be a dumb question, but uh, there, you know, one of the guys in the chat was asking, like, why do you think that maybe the, the why do you think there are more female cops than there are female firefighters? Um, because they were always female cops, but they weren't always on patrol. Hmm. You know, they were always in the precincts. They were always maybe crossing guards or something. They always had jobs. But they weren't in patrol cars doing patrol, mm-hmm. and and now now your husband in those times now your husband is riding with a female, mm. so but kids and, and and young girls actually seen women cops before, not realizing that you're wearing a uniform. They don't know if you're on patrol or you you know you're doing something in the, inside the uh, precinct or whatever. They but but they took the test, you know, they just because they seen women, you know, police officers. No one's that's ever seen super, that's super important than you think, Lois. The optics of seeing a female firefighter gives other girls ideas like, yeah, I could be a firefighter too then, no? Yeah. So how many uh, how many women are on the job today? Do you have any idea? Oh god. 
I think it's it's about ten. It's uh one percent. So what what is it? It's is it one percent? We got up to one percent. Usually, I think it's probably something. it's probably right, about. Yeah, it's probably like a hundred, maybe. Well, now that now that EMS is doing a promotional thing, they get right, more women right. that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they get yeah, what right. they want to get. They want more blacks, they want more minorities, they want more females. That's one way you're doing it. One percent, you know? guys. Yeah, one percent of nine thousand. How do I do it, Coops? How do I do it? You are amazing. Look at you. How do I do it? <laughs> Most, you know what I wanted to ask you? Who was the chief? He was a one hundred two guy. I think I'm, I don't want to say a name without. I'm going to say it. Travis? Is it Traver? Oh, Chief Travis. You see, My nickname he was the, for him was the happiest chief on a job. He was this such a gentleman. <laughs> never did not smile. Oh my God, he was one never of my favorite not... guys when I covered over there. He was such a he was such a nice guy, really. And he was a one hundred two guy, was, right? A long time one hundred two guy. Mike Travis' father was he related to Mike Travis? From no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, th I don't no. think he had anybody. Uh, no, no. Coops, that guy was such an easygoing guy. I, really? That was the guy I was telling you about when I, I covered my one of my first tours in wow. 102. So he's the uh, anti-Chief Steve. He's always has a smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, this is a perfect example about the anti-Steve. So we show up to a box with um, uh, it was a, uh, a water flow. So the guys, right off the bat, I, again, I'm a brand new lieutenant. Every one of those guys had Richie, uh, the two Richies, right? Richie Raz. Uh, Pollard, uh, great Pollard. Oh Dennis Page, uh, you had you. I had you? all of those guys. I had them all. It was incredible. They you didn't even have to be there. Didn't I didn't have, have to be there. there. Believe me, I, I I just followed those guys. It's that kind of house. Next thing I know, they're cutting the gate. I'm like, holy, shit, should we be cutting the gate? Like, I'm like, I don't know. All of a sudden, the chief pulls up. I'm like, holy shit, I don't know if I should have cut the gate or not. You know, I, I didn't really say anything. You know, they get in there, they shut the water off, everything. It's like July. It's just 120 degrees outside, right? In the, at night, 12 o'clock at night. But. Next thing you know, the guys start taking off their jackets, you know, trying to cool off, and the chief's hanging out. Every guy has a cut shirt. Every guy, just a regular <laughs> T-shirt, right? So now I'm like this. Holy shit. So I, I introduced myself to the chief. I'm like, how you doing, chief? You know, Louis Rafano, I'm newly assigned. Hey, Lou, how are you? Good luck with everything. You know, I'll see you around. Make sure you drill all this shit, you know? <laughs> we jump on the rig, and uh, I tell uh, – I think it was Richie Raz. I say, Rich, man, I was nervous, like – Everybody had cut sleeves. He's like, nah, he's a 102 guy. He's probably he's has cut sleeves right now, right? We get back to the firehouse. I go upstairs. I take my shirt off, and I cut my sleeves so that when I went downstairs, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like with the guys, you know what I mean? Nice. But they were all oh, in Sardi, yeah. right? In Sardi was another guy? Yeah, Sardi. Danny and Sardi. Danny and Sardi. All those guys had all those you guys. Never, it was you so you much fun. You've never seen that guy smile, but he was, he was a great firefighter. You had such good guys there. What what a great firehouse. That's yeah. how I met I met Ray and I was so upset, you know, obviously uh when his son uh yeah, I woke up I woke him. up to my alarm clock and I, I just think there's not a whole lot of Ray Pollards around and his son had the same name, right? If I remember I believe so, yeah. He was just that guy, I mean I just felt so he's such a and I used to see him. He stood a, I saw that guy make a great grab, the senior, and uh, yeah. I saw him uh I used to see him at um when he was getting out, I know, I know he had a lot of time. He was yeah. getting out. He used to be, uh, he used to do the rack, you know, he used to, you know, do the rack unit. Nice to see him. And he always remembered me. And, uh, you know, he had told me he was getting out. He was waiting for his kid to get on the job and, uh, yeah. you know, that type of thing. And uh, when I found out, you know, obviously it was uh, heartbreaking, but such yeah. a, a, just a gentleman and a great yeah, fireman. And the kid, great. The kid was young. Great and fireman. I tell you, be, there's going to be a lot of drills on that kind of stuff, you know, like mm -hmm. you always drill on, you always think of things. Stupid right? little things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Pete, Mike Kelly had a good question in there. What was, uh, and also uh, John Albanese had a good question. Uh, could you please ask Lois, this is from John Albanese, if she was um, in that three part documentary about the FDNY's earliest female firefighters? I don't think so. There you hmm. go. And, I'm and what about for, Mike Kelly's? I'm looking for Mike Kelly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lois, last nozzle job when Cullen fell on your leg? Oh. <laughs> Would that be KD duty? I mean, is that Kevin duty? <laughs> Kevin so, I just got out of knee surgery. I just got I had knee surgery. And I just got I just got back, and uh, we we pulled. It was right around the corner. It was a rip roaring job, and the fire is blowing out onto the sidewalk. We had it in the fire hydrant. It was right there. So me and a couple guys actually got out of the rig like this you know i don't even know how to hook up guy hooked up it was just like 
Oh, so you're right close to the close to the yeah. Building. I mean, you dropped the line. All I needed was a half a length. I went up one flight of stairs, and and the one or two forced the door, and uh, where well, they were forcing the door, and 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 it was a very small landing. So what we did was we flaked the line up the stairs, so when they forced the door, it would be a nice smooth way inside, <clears> and <throat> uh, and 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 Colin was trying to force the door with his little officer tool. You know, <laughs> and uh, the truck wasn't there yet. I mean, I'm telling you, we were there. I mean, we all did what we thought we were doing the right thing at the time. I mean, we were doing the right thing at the time. We were flaking out the line. We got water. And uh, I had one knee down and one knee out. And and, and, he, and it came the little tool came out of the door jam. And, and he, he went, went down. And went down right on that knee. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Are you kidding? You're like, holy shit. Oh, uh, well, I'm not even in the room yet. You know, I'm not, I didn't even get a chance to open the nozzle yet. I was like, oh. And I was like, I was in tears and I just kept going. Just kept going, kept going, kept going. And as soon as I thought I had the fire out, I gave it to the backup. I says, I got to walk this off. I can't even, I don't even know if I could stand. So uh, <clears throat> he, had it, he had the backup and uh, he came down. He goes, you missed the room. I said, shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it hurt a lot more. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, no doubt. Now no doubt. He goes, oh, He's a room. good dude. I like Kevin Doody, man. He was a good dude. KD is the best. Yeah. yeah. Yep. He's the best. Did, he you, so uh, cool. did you do a 30 day detail on a truck? No, I did not. What? How'd that happen? I don't know. Really? I, I, I still don't know. When, when I was in the, the only truck in my battalion at that time was 111. Right. There was no sock. The two trucks were 111 and Rescue 2. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But I, I did do details in 111. You know, yeah. my first detail lab, I was there for, I think, 20 minutes. I had to play tug of war with the pit bull next door. Uh, <laughs> this is what we do. This is what hands, we do. This is what we do. Get on the line. <laughs> it might have been the two. He, he hands me a, 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 one of these, like, you know, big wires that you see on the ground, you know, really thick wires. And, tonic, and they play tug of war with the pit bull next door. And I was like, oh, now I got to play tug of war with the pit bull next door. So I played talk about the pit bull next door, and then the beep boops went off. <clears throat> Dennis Conway, I don't know if you're familiar with mm -hmm. Dennis yeah, Conway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yep. He had the irons, I had the can. Uh, it was a couple guys, I forgot who, I might, might have been Duke and, and somebody else. And uh, the beep boops go off, and you could smell the smoke, on, and it was under the, tr under the train tracks on Broadway. So there was nothing to do with the bucket. You couldn't do anything with the bucket. And it was one... One 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 building frame building, front door, out every window to the to the third floor. Couldn't do nothing that. I got the can. Dennis Conway looks at me. I look at him. He goes, "What the fuck you think you're gonna do with that can?" I said, I nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put out three floors of fire with a can. <laughs> so he goes, "We're gonna go. We're gonna go into the exposure." I says, "Okay." So we go to the exposure. We go to the top floor. Now there's no hand line there. I'm not going to question him. He's got like a million years on the job. Right. And he goes, let's pull ceilings. So we pulled ceilings. Pull one room, two rooms. All right, pull a door frame. It was like a drill for me and him. It actually did start coming over. They had to get a lay on up there and, and, and knock it down a little bit. But that was my first tour in 111. In 20 minutes, we had a job and... Uh, yeah. And that was uh, it. Hey, Lois, did, you, did you ever have your can thrown down a hallway? Is uh, Steve <laughs> Pee Wee's asking, and that's that, that, that's a reference to Mr. Lewis Refrano right over there. What my, my lieutenant, my lieutenant, when I, my one of my first jobs, that the fire, we had a job fire, multiple dwelling fire was out to the hall. So when I get up there, I had the can, and the door was open, so the fire was lapping out to the hall. So uh, my lieutenant, Patty Lee, one twenty four guy, he says. Uh, Louis, give me a can, reach in there with the hook, and close the door. So we'll wait for the line. So I give him the can. I go to lean in for, with the hook to close the door. And the next thing I know, I hear ding, da, ding, 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 ding. They're going down the hall. So I look over at him. He's like, don't give your effort tool to anybody, kid, all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, never gave my, I, I never gave my tool to anybody. I was so. going to say, you learned your lesson. That's yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Did I just wanted to say, too, I talked to, to Bobby Gallione. Uh Kevin and I were working on something, uh, a new uh, type of segment that we're going to be hopefully uh, getting getting up and running soon. So I called Bob up just to see if he'd be in, interested in helping out. And he said, I see that you're having 
had lo having Lois on uh, on the show tonight. I said, yeah. He goes, she's one tough firefighter. So I was He's like, great. I, he. I said, if that's coming from you, Bob, like I mean, we know, but uh, you know, from coming from those guys, you know, it's uh, it's a good thing, man. You you don't he get was, the, nobody sugarcoating anything. You know what I mean? That's that's good news. That's good news for me. That's um, I appreciate it. Um, he did something. He, I think, I think they did a special on rescue too, or something. And they, they had a couple jobs, and and I remember he, they, they did a little uh, interview with him after the job was over, and he goes, "It's like a roller coaster ride." He goes, <laughs> <laughs> he, "He did <laughs> say he so felt fun. he felt bad that you got kind of got grouped into a lot of that stuff because you were you were the real deal, you know. So that's yeah, what he did tell nice. me. Right? I wish him well. Nice. Did you alone. work? Uh, did you work a lot in the truck there, or did you work in other trucks, or just mostly one eleven? Just on details, and, yeah. and you know what? Uh, the guys would say, "Oh, because uh, there weren't a whole lot of opportunities." It was a single house. We had three single houses in the battalion, seventeen thirty us. Mm. Then, uh, then when they closed the three four, uh, uh, it was uh, we got picked up one hundred two, and we picked up one hundred five, and one eleven went to the fifteenth division. So there were two trucks in the battalion now, and one hundred five is. It's, it is. It's, it's West Point, you know. Like it's a yeah. whole different. Ball. I've worked that, there. Yeah, yeah. I've worked a there. A whole different ball game, you know. Everybody's uh, everybody's somebody's son who's the chief or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right away. Yeah. And, and and it's a perfect place to learn the job. You got your highways. You got your tenements. You got your brownstones. You got your your highway. You got your subways. You got. It's a perfect place to learn a job, which is, yeah. But um, I would I would take details there. Details to one or two. Uh. Chief Lafamina said you took a detail to Squad One. Do you remember that? Did you? Do no, you remember that? I went to Squad One. That's what he said. I guess I did. I saw it. I saw it on the. Uh, I saw it on the. It was on again. It was on one of those Facebooks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess you didn't go to a job. <laughs> did I get twelve percent for that day? I, I don't know. Oh. We were getting twelve percent. Oh, take oh, shots at the guys now. That's how we were correct. <laughs> They sent uh, they sent the Duke over to Squad One. Hey! Oh, the Duke stuff. No, I remember when uh, when they came out with that name Duke. Now oh, you got to drink again. Oh! You know, I try not to hit it twice in a row. I got I got a letter through the bag from somebody from Squad One. It was a senior guy over there hated the fact that women were on a job and heard that I got the nickname, this nickname, because he didn't know why. I guess he, he thought, uh, because I had a black eye. That's how I got the name. So, uh, so he sends me this letter. You know, it's bad enough women are on the job. He wrote this long letter. It's bad enough that women are on this job, but to, to have the guys that you're working with accept you, and which they didn't. I mean, he, but this is what he heard. Accept you and and treat you like your son. He went on and on and on. So I went down. I used to hang out at 128 Park at the time off 69th Street. I used to play paddle ball and drink beers. And uh, so I go, you got you to gotta look at this. I go, this is the shit I put up with. I take the fucking letter out of my pocket. I open it up. And my, my friend uh, Dave was in the park. And I go, look at this shit. And he reads the letter. He goes, who is this fucking asshole? <laughs> so I go. It's just some guy that's pissed off that women are on a job. I mean, it's it's not worth you know. I'm not asking you to read it to me. So he, he goes into his pocket, takes out his lighter, lights the lighter. He goes, put it on. So I went like this, and I put the lighter on the lighter, set it on fire, dropped it on the floor. He took out his wiener and he pissed on it. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, where are your friends here? You don't worry about nothing. Because as long as you from everybody. So I was like, but that was my first squad one. Of, you know, there were no one. There was no sock. It was just squad one over there. They were. Right. I, I don't know what battalion. They were probably in the four row. I don't know who they'd be with. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was my first experience with squad. One. I listen, you're never gonna make. Listen, the bottom line is you're never gonna make even us. We don't make everybody happy. You know what I mean? We're not here to make everybody happy. So that's the bottom line. I didn't even give a shit. I was showing. Right. Guy exactly. Guy. Believe me. What what kind of look do we have, Coob? What's, What's that the look? The look that we have all the time. You were mentioning it the other day. I can never remember what you said. We were going to make Which a shirt. Ah, uh, oh, Dilly Gaff. Oh, Dilly Gaff. Yeah, Does it looked like sick. I give a, right? this, this guy, the, this guy that I was talking about that set the thing on fire and pissed yeah. on it, had it on his knuckles. Dilly Gaff. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I, that's I, knew awesome. exactly, I knew exactly what you were talking about. 
once you said it, like, oh, that's Dave. That's Dilligan. I mean, we Dilligan. Like this. Yeah, I, had, I let him on each knuckle. I like it. How do, is he from the neighborhood? Do we know that guy? Uh, you might not know him. He seems more my age. You have a couple. How old are you, Kev? 53. Okay, so I got 10 years on you. So when I was uh, hanging out at the park, you were probably uh, in fifth or sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you might have been in the park. I don't know. But uh, you know, he's a neighborhood dude. Well, Petey, we got some, we some group uh, pictures of her, so I wanted to go through some of those pictures there. There you are in your bunker gear trial. Oh, my God. You know, you know, one of the bad things, one of the this, when, when you're a female in the firehouse, you become your firehouse now becomes, uh, uh, like a template for other things. Like, you know, well, we want to try out new bunker gear. That's what that was a cons coat. It was actually a really good coat. It was very light. It was, but they go, we we got we want females to try it. So we get, you know, we want females. You have to have a female so to try out this stuff. So. Uh, so they come up to me and they go, you want to go on the bunker program? Now, I went and bought my own bunker pants and cons in New Jersey for the winter. And I got hell for that. But I was the warmest one in the winter. And before bunker gear, this is when we still had to roll up boots. And then, but I couldn't borrow anybody's clothes. So when my coat got wet, I was wearing wet shit for 24 hours. The only two people who I love to death and unfortunately they're not with us anymore was John Clancy and, uh, <laughs> and, um, uh, 217. He had the nozzle put my face. Uh, Eric I, Allen. Eric Allen. I go, you two guys, got, you should have came to 235 so I can borrow your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only ones who are close to my size. And they're both good, great, great guys. Great guys. So they said, you want to sign up for the bunker program? So I was like, oh, thank you. I got another set of clothes, right? So I go out to bunker gear and that the, the box comes in and it's up in the office and I go, you got a box here? I go, oh, it's my bunker gear. And I, was like a, I was like a kid on Christmas. <laughs> I rip this box open, I open it up and it's bright yellow. And I'm like, no, no. I can't wear bright yellow. Right? Double so what out. I did was, and there's a perfect example. I says, I'm not wearing it all at once. I'm going to wear the coat until it gets nice and salty. And I'm going to put that away and I'm going to wear the pants until they're salty. And then I'll wear them together. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I opened it up. They're calling me Daisy. They gave yeah. me all these nicknames, and I was like, "Oh Daisy. God, we're starting all over again." You're right? a Daisy if you now. do. But, uh, it was great bunker gear. I'm telling you, I really like it. And I was the first one to have leather boots, and they were light, you know, and they were comfortable, and uh, and I loved the leather boots. And so, just that's was the, this a job here? Yeah. Oh, sorry, was that a job? Uh, okay. That was a job. Yeah, we had this. This was a job. That was a job. This job. Is Digger there? I think Digger's there. Let me put my glasses on. This job was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually in the battalion for that day, but I just got jumped in on the group shot there. We uh, There was a fire on the top floor in the hallway. It was a mattress fire. So I go up there and I go, Digger, it's a mattress fire. Hit it with the can. All right, I go up there, hit it with the can. The truck goes up, forces the door. It's front to rear. <laughs> it's <coming out> the <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Missed it by that much. Yeah, rut row. Yeah, yeah rut row. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was sealed up tight. You couldn't even tell there was anything going on. It's like, I didn't realize. It. It was like, oh, all the windows are breaking. I was like, Where's the picture with uh, Neil, Petey? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You got to put that up for my buddy Neil. I love Neil. Stand by. Look at this one right here. Proby Neil. Oh there he is. God. There's the Boston fella. Yeah, Jimmy Cash and Louis Testani, the best uh, detail, uh, and, uh, best um, uh, union delegate ever. He had a tough job. He was the delegate, uh, a union, uh, uh, company delegate during 9 11. Did a fantastic uh -huh. job. Jimmy Cash, home run guy. He's a lieutenant now in the Rockways. Super guys. I, I was just surrounded by great guys. I think that's John Cullen there. What do you got there? A little, right. uh, little brass straight street in there? I was going to say, did you keep oh, that yeah. nozzle we, all the time? Extend the tip. I will give you a little extra couple of extra feet nice. worth of stream. Is it, still, is it always on there all the time? I got to look, see if it's still on there. I mean, you know, things change over yeah, the yeah, yeah. years. Yeah. 290 you know, had the so same thing. It's been on there forever. If you leave it on the back step long enough, somebody's been trying to mongo it down at the Yeah, yeah, they're trying to mongo it. No doubt. But, uh, yeah, so, so every, I always carry the camera in my pocket, always. And like, even after watching oh, that, I, I would give Probies their picture. I go, put this in your locker because 20 years are going to go by fast. And oh, they always oh, go back to another one, Pete. Fire blowing out there. Yep, Billy Carlson. Billy Carlson, one. nice. 
He'll be yeah, on the show. Done. I texted him the other day. He was up up in Maine skiing. Yeah, he he called me yesterday. He goes, I heard you're gonna be on tomorrow. He goes, I'm up here and uh, he's up in Wyndham. Nice. And uh, he goes, I'm gonna watch it when I come home on you on uh, YouTube. But this was a great shot because it has the company number, has Billy, and it has the fire. Right. If you could get the company number in there, right? That was the most important thing, right? And he brought that out to me because he's a big he him and his dad used to buff fires all the time. And he used to say that, you know, you get you get the picture and you as, as much as you can get in a small picture, it's, it makes the whole picture. And it's like, you know, if this just looks like a shelf, if it wasn't two thirty five, you wouldn't know it was Billy, you wouldn't know, yeah. You know. Right, 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 right. It was just a fluke. I didn't know what I was doing. I just took the picture. No, it's great. This one here. That's after 9-11 coming back after digging. That's uh, Chief O'Connor, who used to be my lieutenant when I first got on the job. Richie Colabella, now senior man at 235, that uh, Kevin uh, uh, McBride uh, retired. He, mm. Tough as nails, Nazar man, Steve Gregory. His uh, father was the commissioner of communications. When I got on his job, he came to 235. His brother went to 132, and his other brother went to 102. Uh, uh, great guys. Actually, if it wasn't for Steve, the second one uh, to my left, uh, I wouldn't even know about this show. Uh, Chief Bro was on, and he said that I had uh, I had balls, and uh, he called me up and goes, "Chief Bro gave you the best compliment in the world." <laughs> 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 balls. <laughs> what the hell is getting salty? I didn't even know about it. He goes, "Oh, you gotta watch it. Go on YouTube and watch it." So then I got into that, and the next guy was. Uh, you said, uh, "I know that idiot. I know those two idiots." <laughs> <laughs> the, ne the next guy I watched, the next show I watched, there was a uh, tough, uh, tough Tony Very Alley. Tony Very Alley. Two seventeen. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then Gabby came on. Uh, it, it was great. It was great. And now you're hooked. Uh, well, now you're hooked. Is right. Well, yeah. Yeah, if if I don't watch it during the week, I'll watch this week's next week or whatever. Well, it's the but, only only firehouse kitchen table. No, actually, it's not the only. No, it is the table. only. Yes. Nah, it's the only. Yes. Lois, how Lois, how did you uh, how did you know Eric Allen just from the battalion? He was in two seventeen. He was in two. I got my first unit citation at two seventeen. Oh, that's right. You were telling me that. I, I was detailed there, and uh, they gave me the hookup. Of course, because I, you know, they, I was the detail, and they they were regular guys in the company. Eric Allen had the nozzle. I forgot who had the backup, and I had the, uh, I had to hook, I had to hook up. I even forgot who, who forgot who was who was the chauffeur. But anyway, we pull up. It's blowing out the second floor. It's going up the stairs. You can see from the front door, like people left, but left the door open, so you can see it on the second floor. And I look up and I see people hanging out the window, on the third floor above the fire. And I was like, oh, shit. So I, I hook up. I grab the portable. Uh, I drop, drop the second line. Then I grab the portable, and I threw it up, and I start doing it. And here it comes to 102. I think they turned the corner on two wheels, if I'm not mistaken. And, <laughs> and they're yelling out the window, we got it, Lois. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, I, if you're doing anything right, it's the worst thing. <laughs> now, you're like, now, what? Now, <laughs> Now, the hose was flaked out. Like, a lot of people say, look, you stay I understand how important engine work. Everybody, I know everything is the nozzle, but everybody has to do their job to get that nozzle guy in position to, to do what they got to do. You know, you got your hookup. You got to get water. You got to have it flaked out. You got to make sure it's if, it, if it's upstairs, you got to rope it off, or, you know, tie it off with the, with the, with, with the hook, with the, um, what the fuck, my Hose yeah, strap. The, rope, the, the rope with the hook. The hose strap. The hose strap. Yep. Hook it up to the, you know, you got to make sure everything works to make the nozzle guy look good, you know? And I was like, well, Eric's got it. It's flaked out. I'll throw up the ladder, drop a second line, and then just join the. And he put out two floors of fire. Eric is a beast. Was a beast. Oh, God bless him. Four arms like this, just a strong little guy. And he just never stopped. He just kept going and going and going. And I was saying, oh, I may end up with the nozzle. Nope, I'm going. And he kept going and going and going. One or two pulls the guys out the window. Everything worked out. The second line went up to the top floor. We went up to the third floor. The fire was on the second floor. And everything worked out great. And uh, the lieutenant wrote it up. And I, I didn't even know he was writing it up. I, somebody goes, oh, you got a unit in 217. I said, when? When you got details to 217, your name's all you got a unit citation. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's good. He, so uh, I, well, I said, you know, I he came Eric, to the I spot, says, right? He says, you did a great job. I says. You know, you put out two floors of fire. He goes, he goes. It's not what I did. It's what you did. I says, why? He goes, you dropped the second line. You threw a ladder up. I says, all those little things. That's all that counts. Otherwise, we're just doing our engine job. Yeah. 
Yeah. But the funniest thing was 102. We got it didn't even have the name come to the stop yet. <laughs> that was like when when you, when you have those engines, you know, 111 must have that, you know, back then too. They must have had that issue because they had so many single engines that were by themselves for a little bit of time, right? They don't have the truck. So got a little bit of time, yeah. They got a little bit of time, so they could listen. If you're gonna, you know, you're gonna try and force the door if if you can, and uh, you know that that's a funny thing because it, it, you know guys take pride in that, right? The last thing they want to do is have uh, somebody else throwing up their ladder or forcing their door. Nobody else is there. You know? No, no, no. I, listen, I, I got it. I'm doing it they too. Let themselves down. I wasn't really going out there. I'm doing it too, no doubt. But you know, I'll uh, just give another some, an option. They <laughs> they're pull, down that hallway. That's for sure. Pull up the picture where uh, wasn't there one where you were an aide? And you got some people off the fire escape. You got in trouble. Well, a, a woman, uh, an older woman. Oh, I got woman. it. Stand by. Oh, the oh, lady who's standing stand next to you. I got yes. in so much trouble for that. Oh my god. Uh, pull it up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find it. Just give me a. There it is. Here we go. <clears throat> Boom. Yeah, I was driving the battalion, <laughs> and the woman with the with the white uh, thing on her head. She uh, she was burnt. You, you can't see her arms, but. I don't know. The truck wants to drop the the, the the drop ladder off the fire escape. The fire escape was in the front of the building. It was a front a front fire escape, and one or two or somebody must have just popped it and, and and it dropped. So the ladder was already down, and you know there's that space. And this lady, she had to be like sixty years old. She was like almost ready to holding on to both sides, but leaning forward like like she was going to jump. And I'm yelling at him, saying, don't jump. And she's leaning and loose. So I, I run up the, the, lad, the, the drop ladder. I run up. And uh, it, it, the fire was in her apartment. It was in her kitchen. And uh, she went out on the fire escape. That was, a, And you couldn't get back in there at that point. You know, they were still putting the fire out. So I just turned her around. And I says, let's go down the ladder. No, I can't. I says, no, you can, we can do this. We'll go down the ladder. So what I did was I, 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 I held on to the rungs, crossed my arms. She was in, in between my arms. And I, and and I put uh, my right leg under her ass. Mm -hmm. So I'm going down one step at a time with her, you know, one step at a time. And she's gone. And she did a great job. She held on, you know. Mm. She she didn't panic. She didn't try to turn around and grab my neck or nothing. I says we're going down one at a time. And I can hear the fucking battalion chief. Chief, I don't want to mention his name. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. You could sneeze it if you want. He's a Jesus. Kiss me. <laughs> nice. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. God bless. Is so, that him in the picture? No, 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 no. That might be a deputy there. Is he? No, he went. No, that wasn't him. Because uh, let me tell you, I got yelled at for a month about this. Really? And he's going to me, Monk Lois. You bet. Because I couldn't get. I, I'm holding this lady. I got um, I got her in between my arms and I got one hand on each rung and I'm just dropping down one rung at a time with him and I got her sitting on my leg like like a sitting like she's sitting in a chair hmm. on one of my legs and he's and he's going oh, get me an extra engine and truck five seven to five seven alpha I got extra engine and truck I couldn't respond I couldn't get to the ah, hands I see yeah 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 so I yelled down to the I guy got my hands full <laughs> I'm making a grab here. I couldn't answer him, right? Because he knows what I would do. A lot of times, I would I would help the guy hook off. I would if the guys had the, the frozen hydrant, I'd help the chauffeur go to a three and a half and go to the next hydrant. I'd always do shit like that. It's it's important to do that stuff, but I could still respond because I had a, this this time I couldn't. And he's going, he's over the mic, over the air, going, "If you're in this fucking building, I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> I'm like, and I'm yelling down to, to one of the chauffeurs in the, in the second oh, engine. I'm going, shit. just just. Answer for me. Answer for me. I can't even. What am I going to do? You know. And everybody's looking up like, oh, you know. And so I was like, so we Did you got get lifted. Down and, and, huh? Did you get lifted? No. Well, I got that's, yelled a, at for about yeah, a that's all right. Then you could take it. I, you yeah. know. Listen. I, I, I depend on you. I says your job was done. It got called in. We gave the extra engine the truck. We did the all hands. We did all of this wheel. Blah, blah, blah. It's yeah. <laughs> because this particular chief was always the master of disaster. Yeah, like they would find the body two days after the fire. Oh, fire so he's after. so that's why he was. Fire after yeah. that, you had to do a tertiary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so he like just had some bad luck with that stuff. Yeah, he was. And, he was no what, chief. Steve. He was a good guy. He was a great guy. He was a great chief. He was great. He would always buy me a peppermint patty when he bought a cigar in the in the back. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he was a great guy, but always weird things would happen to him. So like he would like stop the flip out and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, really funny because about a year ago there was a covering captain. 
a light duty in my unit in fire safety, uh, which is what I'm doing now. And uh, he came up to me and goes, I was at that fire where you took that lady down the fire escape. I was like, you were? I mean, that was a long time ago. No, I was, I was at that fire. He goes, that, that was pretty amazing. Did you ever get anything? I said, I got my ass handed to me. For that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because I actually the same thing, right? You when did. you told me that story, get I said, did you get anything for that? She yeah. goes, yeah, I got my ass handed to me. Oh, uh, God. But you what, know are you, what are you doing you now? To do, you got to do it. Yeah. They asked me one time, uh, to, of course, you got to have a female, you know, so of course, they're calling. we want you to go up to Hartford. Hartford Fire Department wants you to interview prospective firefighters. If they had a part of their part of their way of getting on a job up in Hartford was they had to take a, a verbal. You know, they take a written and verbal. You know, of course they didn't send me for the site because everybody. Wrote me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had to come up with questions to ask them, and I had to grade them on their answers. And I go, well, you were a teacher, you got a master's, you got this, you got your firefighter, you know what you're talking about. You're, Go and they'll pay you. Yeah, and I said, "All well, right, I like that part." I'm in. Yeah, and they put you up in a hotel. You had to do it for like three days. They put you up in a hotel, and you know you would ask. And one of the female firefighters was gave some of the best answers. And I wasn't because it was a female. I just thought they were the best answers because guys think a certain way and women think a certain way. Guys will force the door. Women will check the door knob. You know that kind of stuff. But um, so you know, one of the questions was, you see somebody hanging out a window. You have a certain job to do. It's not saving that person. You have another job to do. People are dependent on you to do your job, but you have somebody at the window. What do you do? And that came up to me. I was like, well, you know, I had a job to do in the 5-7, and I didn't do that. <laughs> so now, I was like, so now what, what answer am I going to do? What am I going to do? But it, it really is that I wasn't doing my job. I really wasn't doing it. And if she would have fell, I would have felt bad. And if she didn't fall, I wouldn't have gotten yelled at. So, Yeah. Hey, you saved the life. I would have done the same thing, believe me. I don't know. I don't know. She was hanging. I mean, her body, her arms were behind her, and she was she was in shock. She was burnt. She was she was burnt. She was burnt pretty good on her arms. That's why. Yeah, but she, she was answering questions. She was she's probably in shock too. A little bit. Off, and she's black, so you can see you can tell it. Black people look worse when they're burnt because the skin underneath is white. Mm. You know, so it looks a lot worse. You know, it, I mean, it's second to be bones, it's second to be bones, but she was just hanging there, and I was like, oh, my God, what the hell? You know, I mean, anybody could have went up and gotten her. Or I was just there at the time, but it was kind of... Oh. I would have so, gave you a B. What? I would have gave a you a B. B. <laughs> yeah. I got a B. I got my butt handed to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, All right. Awesome. What do you got, Pete? Well, uh, I don't know. Is it about that time? I don't know. Unless Lois has something else. Is there anything else you wanted to uh, discuss besides the old school tip, uh, Lois? Was anybody you wanted to talk about or anything? Uh, Check your list. Check your notes. Put your glasses no, on. No, I, I did. Okay. I actually wrote some stuff down. <laughs> it's okay. We got the knife guy. We got the Duke name. We got to do a Duke now. Bye. 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 We got the yellow bunker gear, the bathrooms. Uh, Oh, CFRD. We were oh. the first ones to go online with that. The eleventh division. Oh boy. And 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 we went oh I don't know if I came on the first night to it or second night to it, but I remember we missed two jobs picking up junks on Eastern Parkway because at the time it was first, second, and third do areas. So our third do area is Eastern Parkway down past two eighty and then on the Modal Avenue past two thirty down that way. And it was just like it didn't go over very well, and it was it, it was it was tough, you know, because <clears throat> I don't know why. If you get assigned to an EMS one, that you're legally blind to go into that, and you know what you're going to, and it may be one or two people, you know, even if it's a car accident, it's not, you know, my three story building with maybe twelve people trapped. Yeah. It's you know, and the second do engine can very easily, or third do engine, whoever's assigned to that, can very easily pick that up while you go to your first do box. And that that was a big morale morale uh, buster. Oh, it yeah, was, it crushed. Was horrible. It's horrible. I mean, now, that... now you're used to it, you know. But when when you're used to, uh, you know, not going to fires and putting them out, and then all of a sudden you're passing them to, to, to go to a CFRD run to pick up a drunk. <laughs> and a lot of times, and a lot of times it was bullshit. Like I agree. Like we, but how much can we do? We can't transport. What can mm. we do? We can give oxygen. You know. 
uh, in the end, that's what somebody, it turned out uh, to put be. somebody in a splint, put a splint right. on your leg, put somebody in a sling or something like that. But there's very little you can do. But that was a that was one of the things that that I really had a hard time with because we got slammed. I mean, we had thirty one thirty something runs on a night tour, and half of them were EMS, and we missed work, we missed jobs. But you know, that's the way the rest of the country works. Everybody's every, every most firefighters in other cities are EMTs. You can't even yeah, be right. a firefighter yeah. if right, you're not right. an EMT. You mm -hmm. know, so we were. But how many people do the work we do? You know. Right. A lot of places, their downtime, they can help you. Yeah, they're available. Uh, but like we weren't said, available. Like you said, Lois, we did it backwards, right? So we, we, we took that on after, and that's why it stung so bad is because you were missing jobs. And whereas now the guys that get on, they don't know, know any different, right? They, they know don't know any gonna, different. If you go that's to an right. engine and you're in a busy area, yeah, you're going to catch work. You're going to pay to go to work, right? You're going to right. run, you know, and you're going to do EMS. But I don't think we go – the guys go on so much EMS. Um, although I do think that the uh, the nine one one operators like prompt the people kind of almost what to say to get an ambulance run. So you know Look, because they're you, just trying to know, cover their people, ass. The city people uh, know what to say. Yeah, know what to say. Yeah, and we've had a couple of regular customers in two thirty. Yeah, yeah, you always have those regular guys that mm -hmm. wanted to wanted to ride to the county or something to to move right. up on trucks. Yep. The ambulance people would be telling us this. I felt yep. bad for them. First of all, they're way underpaid. Oh my in god! My, in my opinion, oh they my got a god. really tough job. Oh, they got you know, a horrible job. They don't have a job. firehouse kitchen. No doubt them, about it. They're sitting in the bus on the corner. I feel bad no for them. And they're great at what they do. And it hasn't changed <laughs> for the they people. Are great at what they do. That's why they want to get on our job. That's yeah. really why they want they take the promotion because it's horrible. And, and they're trying to change that. And I'll tell you why. I mean, I feel bad for EMS because once these guys have one or two years on a job, they're, they're, they're good at what they do. You know, it's like firefighters. You, you go to more jobs, you get better at what you do. And now they're losing them. Yeah, they want to leave. So everybody, everybody's yeah. a probie. All they're getting is probably because they get pain and then they go in there. Big turnover. Coming over to us. Right, so, big turnover. I don't know. I mean, it's important that we know what to do. I, the only good thing that I really did like about it is because I was good at that stuff because I had a master's in science. So I understood it was easy for me to take those courses. Hmm. And if a firefighter got hurt, I'd know what to do. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know so, what? On the legit ones, though, we actually make a difference. Like we were in, in 288. You know, if you're going on a, a CFRD run, most of the time it was legit. So if you were able to save or do CPR on somebody's grandmother, sister, kid, whatever it is, oh, yeah, a choking baby, difference. I agree. Yeah, I agree. absolutely. But, yeah, but you know, other people need your help. You know, a bus can't come and put out your fire. No, you right. Know? Yeah, but maybe they can get a second bus to help. Yeah, but you know, there's imminent danger there. You know, you yeah. see fire yeah. blowing out windows, and you have to pass that corner. Yeah. You know. Very uh, frustrating. They're waving me in. It is very frustrating. <laughs> but, but They're waving it's me only, in. It's that whole abandonment legal thing. You know, yeah, you yeah, can't no abandon doubt. the patient it's even all, if you're not even there. Yeah. Half of those runs you go on is because of the legal, the city's legally bound. Yeah. On the, it's all bullshit, most of it, right? But aren't we legally bound to put out a fire and help people also? I mean, that's the, because it's not written in writing. No, no, no doubt. I'm just saying that the city, because they are they're afraid of lawsuits and stuff they'll rather just send you they'll just send yeah. you whatever the call is they'll send you yeah. because you you know why make a decision on something right. if it's half and half yeah. and you're not really sure just send them right so yeah. that's why you get you know the you know the engines are going yeah. on so many runs it's because because of, of lawsuits for against the city so but then how many times how many how many times do you want to rig and they'll redirect you yeah it's a, it's, it's a fire run but you, it's okay to redirect you. You can get redirected yeah. in those situations, but you can't get redirected in yeah, like another situation. And I'm not talking them. about, you know, an odor of smoke that comes over the. I'm talking right. about you passing the building and it's blowing out windows. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I was definitely frustrated. And then, and then your poor, you know, the poor boss is going to get charges and this and that and the other thing. <laughs> it, that was that. That was the. That was the. A part of my job that I did not like right off the bat. Is that uh, we couldn't do what we had to do? Uh, look, if there's nothing else going on, no problem, not a problem. Yeah. But now your second do is coming from who knows where, whether they're from their quarters or, or, or maybe further, maybe they're coming off a run from their tail end of the district yeah. to, to get there. Or it, maybe, it, they're maybe they're coming out of somewhere else where uh, the trucks not. They used might to be them in the coming. subways. 
they yeah. might be in the suburbs. You can't even yeah. get them to come up quick. They got a job. You, they, they can't even hear you or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was, and that's my only gripe as far as. All right, you're allowed one. That's cool. Um, that's, it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, get it off. Get it out. Get it out. Poison. Get it out. Purge. Get it out. Purge. Purge. <laughs> All right, Pete. Now I think it might be time. It I, is that time, time, Petey. You know what time is it is, guys? It's no, time for the old school tip Woo! of the day. Day, day. All right, young lady, what do you got? Okay, I thought of this a lot, and I, and I know like a lot of people that talk about you know uh, things you're supposed to do at fires or listening to bosses or this and the other. But this is something you're not going to learn uh, in in the academy. If there's a problem in the firehouse. There's so much emphasis on reporting it to EEO and reporting it to your employer. If you could take care of your problems on the apparatus floor by talking to people and solving your differences before you get the boss involved, because once you get the boss involved, it's got to be documented, it's got to go to EEO, and it gets blown out. And you might be taking this through your career with you that you're going to, you know, you can't take this, you can't take that. If it's something that's not going to affect your safety, and you're not going to put you in any physical danger. Most things can be resolved on the first floor with somebody you trust or a senior person. And uh, before you get to the level where it has to be uh, going to headquarters and people are getting called down and people might get lifted. I think most things, whether it be male, female, black, white, Hispanic, white, Hispanic, black, whatever, whatever the situation is, take care. Most things can be solved right then and there. Keep an open communication with people. Uh, people got to learn to accept criticism. Not like we're picking on you or picking on senior people. Senior people in the firehouse have to uh, learn to address certain issues before it gets way out of hand. Because I've heard so many things going on recently and even before I left the job where things could have been resolved right away. You're not going to learn this in the academy. You're not going to learn this going to drills down at the rock and sensitivity training and this and any other thing. Most things, when people address other people directly face to face, most things can be resolved without getting other people involved. And I don't need to go any further with that. And I hope I don't get anybody in trouble, including myself. <laughs> love it. Amen. Brother. Amen. Ah, Amen. Uh -huh. I love it. I got, I, mean, I got one more I, thing. I, I did it. I did it without having any problems. And I, and I don't think anybody's going to have, you know, you do your job. You show up. You go into that hallway. You come out of that hallway. You come out of that building. You put that line in the, in, in, you put the back in the bed. You go back to quarters. You take everybody's mask. You wash face pieces. You change bottles. You go in. You peel potatoes. You clean the toilet bowl. Nobody's <laughs> above or below anything. Do what you got to do. And if you have a problem with what people are asking you to do, Take care of it on the first floor, not the second floor. But my my office was on the second. The office's office was on the second floor. <laughs> so when I say second floor, I mean the lieutenant and the captain. Most things don't have to go that far because once you go that far, too many people are involved, and it could have been squashed from the get go. I, 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 okay? I, I, I got one quick. I agree. Last question for you before we get going here, and it, I actually noticed that there were more females in the chat tonight that I've seen before we had an andrea in there a sasha a few different you know and and i thought that was really cool so i'm hoping that we're going to get a lot more of the future female firefighters wanting to watch this episode right here and if you had a message for those young ladies um who want to get on the job and they're thinking about it but maybe they're a little nervous about it or something like that what, what would you what would you uh say to these ladies okay the first thing i'm going to say is if you don't think you can do it you're right if you think wow. you can do it, if you think you can do it, you're right. So, you know, there were, there were women uh, ahead of you, probably women half your size, probably not as smart as you that are doing it. All right. Do it because once you do it, you fall in love with it. If you don't give yourself a chance to do it and you got to be around the right people, too. You got to be around people that are going to support you. You can't have people telling you, no, 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 no. You know, this is not for you. This isn't a girl's job. No, don't do this. Don't do that. They're saying that because they probably think you're not. You're going to be better than them. Just do what you got to do. If you want to do this job, it's a great job. Nobody really has ever, nobody I ever really met that was on this job hated it. Once they got it, they loved it. Yeah. You know, they loved it. 
and they, and they glared it. I didn't know what to expect. I turned out I loved the job. So don't let anybody distract you. Concentrate. Stay in shape. All right. It's very important, especially when you're young, because when you get old, other things start falling apart besides getting beat up from the job. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you, you know, I know, we all know. But just just do it. Just do it because you can always quit. But you may never get an opportunity to do it again. Mm-hmm. A lot of we have age limits. You can't just say when you're 30 that you should have done it. You should have done it when you were 27 and 26. So, hey, if I could do it, you could do it. We could all do it. I love it. Two two old school tips of the day. Yeah, yeah, that one. There you go. Excellent job, Lois. Great show. Thank you so much. Really loved it. Okay. I wish I could love fart it. right now, but I don't have any gas. Oh man. What? <laughs> What Lois, that's for you, you, Lois. Lois, this one for you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Oh, shit. You can save and tape it and send it to next one. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right Ruffy, you got any shout outs tonight? No, I don't have anything tonight. All right, I got one from one of our customers, uh, a fire chief from, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Leo Minster, Massachusetts. It's a birthday shout out. It's Chief Rob Sidlow. Of, I think I'm saying this right, of Leo Minster, Massachusetts. Happy birthday from his girls, his daughters, Mackenzie and Madison. Happy birthday. A little happy birthday shout oh, out. How nice. Very nice. Hey, hey. And I got another thing, Ruffy. We just got these in. Yes, I'm going to do the shameless plug right now in front of Lois. I'm not afraid oh. to do it. Yep, here we go. We got these little <laughs> things in. Check them out. I love them. I'm going to show you something, too. It's a multi-tool. It comes in red. It's a multi-tool. You got uh, you have a, a knife on here. You've got a bottle opener. You've got when you press the top, you got what? What? You got a little LED flashlight. How you doing? And you have uh, let's see, bottle opener, screwdriver, Phillips head, regular Phillips head. It comes on a keychain. It's heavy as hell. You can beat somebody in the head with it. <laughs> we lost Lois' face. Uh, what happened? Lo- Lois, we lost uh, your face. That's okay. You're not missing anything. You <laughs> I'm getting, she knows. I'm getting she... texts sort of phone, over the phone about you know, what, what a great what a great show. You guys. Everybody right, stop, right. stop texting Lois until we're off the air. Yeah, we're almost done. We're almost done. Pete's going to give us a shameless plug. All right. Go, Petey. Well, you guys all know that if you are listening to this podcast or want to listen to it, you should be tuning in to iTunes Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever awesome podcasts are found. That said, um, if you're listening to this, head on over to youtube.com forward slash get and salty experience where you can watch our beautiful faces, except for Lois's right now. That's a shame can... because I had something to show you. That's too bad. Oh, <laughs> you've been holding out all night. Wow. And then you're going to take your filthy booger hook off the bang switch and hit the like, subscribe, and share button, Listen please. Listen to filthy animals. There was over 800 guys in there. I don't know why we don't have 800 likes. Hit we'll get the it. We'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Go ahead, yep. Pete. Well, you know, we'll, we'll just keep on saying it. All right. And also, guys, head on over to Instagram where you'll find us at Salty Dog Inc., where Mr. Refrano is up at Zero Dark 30, texting me and putting up the finest fire photos in the game. Let's put one of Lois up there. Did we have one of Lois up there the other day? Yeah, we did. I right? did. I put two. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And last but not least, guys, head on over to getting salty apparel.com where Kevin's manic creations like the fire hydrant stuff and all this oh, other okay. stuff is coming out uh you get cool cups accessories t-shirts hats all the stuff um that you'd ever want the best firefighter apparel in the game get in saltyapparel.com also guys if you have a question for us for our question and answers uh email us at getting salty experience at gmail.com please spell check those and think about it before you hit the send button. Thank you. Uh, also, one more thing. What are you um, doing? <laughs> what, are you, what is he doing in there? We don't even know. Uh, and then head on over to Facebook where the Getting Salty Fans page is. Uh, I think they're over 10,000 now, right, Lou? Yeah, I'm working on yeah, a well, T-shirt for them. I'm working on a T-shirt for them. Nice. nice. Yep. So, uh, an Members only. Members. Much like, much like uh, Ruffy used to wear the members only jacket back in easy, the day. Easy, so. easy. <laughs> yeah, yep. man. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all for tonight's show. Excellent. Dynamite. Right. Lois, even though yes. we can't see you, we love you. We love yeah. you. Thanks for coming on the show. Pete, did you Stay close on your house yet? Oh, Monday. Pete? Monday. We Good have luck. a date. Good Every- luck. Good luck to you. All Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy We're it. Gonna- 
I just got a lot of. Lou, Kevin, love you guys. Have a great day, young lady. Don't hang up yet. We're gonna hang up. Yeah, don't hang up. Don't hang up yet. All right, stand by. All right, guys. All right, fellas. I'll uh, we'll see you uh, next time, (laughs) and uh, stay low and go. All right. Good night, guys. We'll see you. uh, See you at the big one. Cheers, everybody.